I don't know where you put it all, Fred. I really don't. Well, you know me, Mrs. Walker. Always was an old tea belly. Now, are you sure? Quite sure, thank you. Bah, yeah, Clinch. You'd sniff a tea bag of flame in mile away, you would. I would have thought you had better things to do than suck tea, Fred. Oh, aye. Such as what? Like fixing the lock on that bottle store. I've just had to chase them Rafferty kids off again. So that's where they're getting them empties from. Hey, I'll skin them when I get out of there. Really, Fred, how many times have I asked you to keep that place locked? Well, I keep forgetting, Mrs. Walker. I'll do it this morning, promise. Don't pour us one, will you? I wasn't going to. I don't remember seeing that get up before bed. You're nearly not seeing it now. Was I asking you? <laughs> well, dear, it's not the sort of thing a lot of good girls could wear, but it's definitely you. Oh, tell Mrs. Walker, I am glad you like it. What's it all in aid of any road? Well, it's a bank holiday, isn't it? Not that you'll have noticed. Not that it makes any difference to me. I never go nowhere anyway. But, like the man said, if you don't put your goods in the window, you don't get no takers. <laughs> really, bet. Well, you never know, Mrs. Walker. I mean, Barry Manilow might come walking through that front door. Just looking for somebody to whisk off to Southport that oh, afternoon. Oh, oh. oh Conky Manilo, I know him. He comes here every Monday for his bacon butties. All right, all Conky right. Manilo. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> I'll give him till half two. After that, I'm anybody who happens to have a big flash car and a couple of hours to spare. Ha! <laughs> see your old bangers in for service, and isn't it? Ah! Oh, all right. Sorry, sorry. Some of the swelling's gone down any road. Yeah, you're lucky. Lucky? Yeah, a couple of days and that'll have disappeared. And after all you've been through, I'd call that lucky, wouldn't you? Oh, I'm glad you do. She's right, you know, he could have scarred you for life. Honestly, Elsie, how her husband could have beaten her. Yeah, well, like it that. does happen, you know. I don't know what to do, Elsie. I don't know. Honestly, I don't. Look, I've known more fellas like that than I've had ladders in my tights, and I'll tell you something. You can forget him. He's no hero type, he's your Terry. Eat and run, that's him. Well, now he's had his fun. You won't see him again. He won't come back here. He'll be back down the sewers with the rest of the flaming rats. Brian? Yeah. <laughs> it's Fred here. Fred G. Yes, Fred. What can I do for you? Yeah, I'm working on it now. Don't worry, I'll be ready by tonight. This afternoon? Well, yeah, yeah. I suppose I could. What time? Three? That's pushing it a bit, mate. Yeah, all right. I'll see what I can do. OK. See ya. Well, Lynch. Old Tarty do not know where to go, eh? Mm. Most like it, Freddy. I bet you're just dying to get out in the wild open spaces. No, you got it. <laughs> well, today's your lucky day, then, isn't it? Eh? Well, where do you fancy going, Lynch? The leafy lanes of Cheshire, Derbyshire, go on, you name it. What are you on about your cars in dock? No problem. I've just been on the phone to young Brian. He'll have it ready for first thing this after, just after we close. <sighs> I told you it was your lucky day, Lynch. <laughs> I never said a word. Here, yeah, love. You fill that little lot up. And your uncle Arthur give you two chocolate biscuits. Two? Yes, double time for bank holiday. Bye! Heck, you'll be as big as house. <laughs> two chocolate biscuits. <laughs> Give us half a pound of bacon, kid, and make it lean, will you? And if you say which way, I'll throttle you. I wasn't <laughs> going to. What do you want? Do you want uh, plain um, or smoked? Well, uh, whichever it's leanest, you not know. Not in it, love. Uh, that, I think. And which is cheapest? That. That. I'll have that, then. Right. What brings you round here on a bank holiday, anyway? Can't stay away from that place across the road, is that it? Uh, I mean, it's the Ivy, I'm ah. Anyway, you're not complaining, are you? I'm not complaining, love. It's always a pleasure to do business with you. <laughs> what he means is he'd be happy to take your money off you any day of the week. <laughs> ah, well, it's a pleasure to do business with you now. After all, you've done for girls in factory. Eh? Oh, that's where you've been nipping off to in your lunch hour, is it? No, I'm on about this wine bar, this disco thing. Oh, that. Hey, I'll tell you what, Baldwin were like a dog with two tails, kid, when he got go-ahead. It's been like working in holiday camp ever since. Look, Vera, it's not to do with me, you know. 
Well, you were all for it, though, weren't you? Yes, I was. I said I was. And you are on the council. Yeah, that's nothing to do with it either, Vera. Look, if you don't, don't want to take credit for it, kid, I mean, that's up to you, isn't it? But I'll tell you what, it's done a lot for us, that's for sure. Yeah, well, if I were you, Vera, I should make the most of it while you can, because once those doors are open, it's going to be a very different story, I can tell you. Well, I hope it is. It needs livening up round here, kid. It's like a flipping morgue after chucking out town. 64 pounds. Hey, that just happens to be the way some of us like it. Well, that's your hard look, isn't it? Because it's not going to be like it for much longer. Thank you. Thank you, Vera. You know, I wish you wouldn't keep saying it's got something to do with me. Well, what do you expect, Alf? I mean, you are the councillor around here, aren't you? And you made it very clear where your sympathies lay. Folk are bound to think that if there were strings to be pulled, you were in a position to do the pulling, aren't they? You don't really believe that. No, do I, Egg? But honestly, Alf, you've got to admit that if there were going to be any muck flying about at all, you did leave yourself wide open for it, didn't you? Now then, how are we doing, love? Nearly finished? No. Come on, Stanley, I'll just take you to the cleaners. I don't feel like it, no. Oh, come on, I'm only asking you for a game of darts. I'm not taking you hang gliding. I don't feel like it. One game? No. Look, do you want these or don't you? Because I'm not standing here like flipping Eros all afternoon. No. Right. What's the matter with you, Stanley? You've had a face like a wet weekend ever since you walked in. Oh, it's hard to be an elder. Seems more of their arches instead of me. Why do you make that up? We've got a letter saying he's ill. I just shut up the drain pipe like a flipping rat. Well, he is her brother. Well, I'm her husband, aren't I? I'm entitled to food on the table when I get in from work. She's trying to starve me to death. <laughs> Stanley, I think if you went without food for a month, you wouldn't starve to death. Oh, ha, ha. Anyway, if I can't thrash you with darts, I'll have to get down to the Legion, see if I can make a bit of beer money on the, uh, on the snooker table, then. Yeah, see you. Hello. Hello, darling. Oh, mate. Thought this is where you'd be hiding. Give us a pint, will you, Bess? Well, Ian. Ah, a bottle of lager. <laughs> uh, and a bottle of lager. And you better get a uh, laughing fella there to drink as well. I won't know to laugh about, am I? Of course you have. Now to laugh about, Stanley, let me introduce you to our temporary cook and bottle washer. Hey, let's have the bottle washer if you don't mind. <laughs> the minute she's going to cook while Illa's away. Got it in one, Stan. Ah, oh, you saved our lives. Well, I couldn't stand by and see two strapping fellas fade away, could I? What's for tea? Uh, how does uh, steak kiddie pie sound? Like manna from heaven, eh, Stan? Yeah. Oh, uh, you'll uh, be buying in, won't you? I suppose so. <laughs> What's that got to do with anything? Oh, some things Elder wants from to get us back, you know. So? Well, she's getting in for us, couldn't she? Save me the trouble. Do you know, Stanley, there's three kinds of idol. There's idol, flaming idol, and you. <laughs> Look, uh, give me 20 minutes, will you, Bubbles? Don't rush back, love. Tomorrow will be soon enough. What's all that about? You're only looking at the first prize winner in the dumbest blonde of the year contest, aren't you? You what? I've only got myself booked for an afternoon in the country with Mouth Almighty himself. Fred! Who else? Hey, I'm available for self-defence lessons. Eddie, love, I might just take you up on that. Oh, I wasn't thinking of you, I was thinking of Fred. <laughs> Look like he means business, lover. <laughs> oh, he means business, all right. <laughs> Still can't see how you came to fall for it. By opening my flipping mouth big enough to drive a bus through, that's how. I can't see what you're bothered about, honest I can't. You don't know Fred G like I do. Well, no, but I mean, I can't see what you can get up to on a, a little drive in the country, not in broad daylight. If Fred G put his mind to it, love, he could make life very difficult in a crowded supermarket on a Saturday morning. Morning. Oh, well, I'd swap places with you anyway. Don't. What? You go instead of me, Cop. Well, I can't, actually. Um, well, not today. I've, I've promised Rita that I'd help her with the stock taking. Um, I mean, any other time. You don't need any help, do you? Uh, no. No, I'd, I'd better be going. Enjoy your drive. Ta -ta. I never know whether she's having me on or not. Got a point, though, aren't you? Oh, come off it, Betty. You know Fred as well as I do. Yeah, but she has, love. I mean, when you, when you haven't got a car of your own, you appreciate little things like that. Well, I've not got my own car, have I? I still say, I'm not all like you. Betty? What? I don't know why I never thought of it before. What are you doing this afternoon? Hang on. It was you he asked. Did I say I wasn't going? Hello, love. What are you doing here? Well, I've fallen for this filthy, dirty, greasy car mechanic, haven't I? I don't know 
away from home to spend the rest of my life with him. You daft beggar. And what have you done with Nick? Abandoned him and all, have you? No, Jackie's got him. I thought you might like a cup of tea that didn't taste of gear oil. You are an angel. Oh, well, if I'd have known it was going to have that effect, I'd have brought some cake and all. You mean you haven't? <laughs> what do you think? What would I do without you? Buy your own cake? True. Is this Fred's car? Yeah, more's a pity. It's running like a dream. Must have been daft to get rid of it. I'm not complaining. You never do. Look, uh, hold that for a few minutes, love. While you're here, you can hold the fort for us. You're not going out. Only ten minutes. This guy's phoned him with a flat battery. He wants me to get him started. I said I'd get round as soon as I could. Well, that's a nice welcome, isn't it? The minute I walk in the door, you can't wait to get out. I'll not be long honest. You've time for a cup of tea. I'll have more time when I get back. Go on, then. Mwah. If you're not back in 15 minutes, I'm putting the place up for sale. I'll be back in ten minutes. Hello, gay love. Is the governor about? Uh, no, he's not. I don't think he'll be long, though. Oh, no, Sweat. It's not him I want. It's this. Uh, he said it'd be ready this afternoon. You don't happen to know if he's finished it, do you? I think so. I was working on it when I came in. Said it was running like a dream. Oh, well, that's good enough for me. Will you ask him to pop me to the Rovers with the bill? I'll, uh, I'll get him squared up. Right. Someone special, then? What's that, love? Well, I gather wherever you're going, it's not alone. Could be right. Right, come on, madam, shift yourself. I don't want to go, Elsie. Not looking like this, I don't. Look, a pair of dark glasses and no-one will know any different. I don't want to go. Oh, I see. You want to sit here, all morbid, thinking about what's happened. Is that it? Oh, doing more good than traipsing around the shops. Half of them are closed anyway. Look, it'll do you good. Get you out of here. Get some fresh air to that brain of yours. Now, come on, move it. You'll have it dark. You think he's coming back, don't you? That's why you want me out of this house. You don't want to leave me on my own. You think he's coming back. Now, listen, lady, if I thought for one minute that husband of yours was coming back, I wouldn't be standing out there. I'd be in here behind that door with the biggest saucepan I could lay my hands on. I think you probably would as well. Ah, uh, it would and all. Now, come on, worry up, move it. Oh, I'm sorry, Elsie. I've been nothing but trouble as I landed back on you. I've been nothing but trouble all my rotten life. I see. Well, if you want to sit here full of self-pity, that's OK by me. Right, forget it. Oh, it's true, though, isn't it? It is not true, and you know it. You've just had a bit of bad luck, that's all. It could happen to any one of us. And I know what I'm talking about, particularly when it comes to fellas. I haven't met one of them yet that's worth getting yourself in a state for. Do you think that fellow of yours is sitting there in that flat of his now, holding his head in his hands, feeling full of flaming remorse? Do you think he's going to see what he'd done to you now he'd be sorry? Do you? Do you? Woody Ecker's life. I'll tell you something, madam. The only one you're torturing is you, not him. Well, if that's what you want, good luck to you. If you want to sit here and torture yourself over some flaming fella that's not fit to lick your boots, well, that's your funeral. But if that is what you want, well, then you're not the kid I took you for. Well, do I hang this up? Lend us a pair of dark glasses, will you? Ah, that's more like it. Come on, Ben, let's be having you. He missed his way, did Fred, you know, Mrs Walker. How'd he been, Bev? He'd have made a belt in Royal Footman. Look, never mind that. Are you coming or aren't you? You mean I've got a choice? Look, come on, stop lacking about. Hang on a sec. Eh? <coughs> Betty? Betty? Betty Turpin, widow of this parish. She works here. Well, I know she does. What do you want her for? Oh, it's all right, Fred. Only Bet said you wouldn't mind. Wouldn't mind? Yeah, if I come with you. You what? Well, it's not going to cost you any more in petrol, is it? She don't get out much. Look, I, I thought it was just going to be for the two of us. Well, if that's the way you feel, don't mind me, Tech Betty. Look, you know what I mean. I know that the longer we stop here arguing the toss, the less time we've got out there. In fact, I'm not sure it's worth going at all now. Of course it is. It'll be a lovely outing for all of you. And if I weren't feeling so tired, I'd come along with you myself. Come on, then. Let's go if we're going. Come on. See you later, Mrs Walker. Enjoy yourselves. Oh, we will. Eh, Freddy? I don't know. I'll tell me back for five Look, minutes. Look, Brian, I've said I'm sorry. I didn't know you hadn't finished the flipping car. You said it was running like a dream. Yes, the engine was. Well, then. That happens to be a bit more to a car than an engine, doesn't it? Look, that? Brian, I've said I'm sorry. I can't do any more. You might as well go home if you're going to carry on like this. All right. It doesn't matter. 
It's just that I wanted to get it finished today, that's all. I thought Arthur would have cracked it. Was there much to do? No, only bits and pieces. Well, then, can't you do it tomorrow? I'll have to now, won't I? Not that he's going to be too chuffed about that, though, is he? Oh, I don't know. You are. Folk could sooner do without the missus for the day than the motor. He'd have been a sight less pleased if it hadn't been finished. Yeah, so we gathered. What does he want it for, anyway? Take a girlfriend out, I think. Which, come to think of it, ain't a bad idea. Eh? Well, I don't mind you working bank holiday Monday when you've got something to keep you busy. But now that you haven't, I think I can find a girlfriend of your own who wouldn't mind a bit of a trip out somewhere. Little cracker, is she? You wouldn't believe. Oh, yes, I would. God bless my soul. Take, take it, it out. out. Take, take it out. out. Take it out. Remove it. <laughs> what do you reckon to that, then, eh? Oh, it's a different world, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Hey, yes. Oh, do you know, I could stop here all day. Yeah, you'll do that, Betty. Me and Bet won't be far. Eh? Well, I mean, it's daft, isn't it, just sitting in a car? I mean, if you want to sit in a car, you may as well stay at home. No, I, I thought we could go for a bit of a walk, like, you know. Oh. oh. Well, I wouldn't say no to that, Freddy. Right. <coughs> Come on, then, let's get on. Hang on, wait for Betty. Well, Betty said she wanted to stop here. I never did, you did. Well, I thought you wanted to sit in the car, you know, and, and look at the view. Oh, there's plenty of time for that when we get back, isn't there? Yes. A bit, love. Yeah, ready when you are, Duke. Come on. Oh. Well, come on, then. I'm stopping here now, aren't I? Oh, it was your idea. Take no notice of him, Betty. Fellas are like that. Mm. They say one thing one minute, another thing the next. No, take no They never know what they want. No, it's a waste of time. Brian, come in. Mrs. Walker. Uh, well, it's Fred I was after, Mrs. Walker. Is he in? No, he's not right here, dear. I thought it was him then. Uh, perhaps you could give a message for me. Yes, of course. Well, he'll come round to pick his car up this afternoon. Mm, I know he's out in it now. He's taking Bess and Elizabeth for a little run in the country. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I wasn't there when he came for it. Uh, Gail was. And she thought I'd finished working it, but I hadn't. Nothing wrong with this, is there? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. Well, the engine was the main thing, but I did that. But, uh, well, he did ask me to do a couple of other jobs as well while it was in. Uh, sticking door lock, just the handbrake, and a couple of bulbs that had gone. I just wanted to tell him I'd not got round to it. Hmm, I see. So, if you could let me have it back for a couple of hours sometime. I'll tell him, dear. Thanks, Mrs Walker. <laughs> see you then. Bye-bye, Brown. Do you know, I'll remember this view for the rest of my life. You're not the only one, Betty. <sighs> it's funny, isn't it? But after a while, you know, it doesn't seem real. You know, you'd think that if you just reached out to touch it, it'd disappear. <laughs> I flipping know it would. Anyway, ta for bringing us, Fred. Don't get out much these days. Well, not now. The pleasure's all Freddy's. Oh. Isn't it, Chuck? Have you seen how it's brought little roses to his cheeks, Betty? <laughs> You don't get enough fresh air, you know, Fred. There's not much chance for out else this after, is there? Not much chance for out else at all. What is the matter with you, Fred? You've been about as much fun as toothache all afternoon. 
come on, you flipping know. Now what have I done? Don't come that. What? You know what. Look, when I said we'd go for a run, I mean, you and me, just the two of us together, I didn't mean to turn it into a flipping staff outing for the Rovers, did I? Oh, jamming. Well, I'm sorry, Fred. I would have thought you'd have wanted Betty to come. I mean, she is nearer your age, isn't she? <laughs> now we're you off. I'm going to stretch my legs, Anna. On your own? <laughs> Not much flipping choice, is there? Oh, well, if you don't want me to come. Eh? For a walk. What do you mean? You and me together on our own, like? Why not? Oh, come on, what are we waiting for? Right. Come on, Chucker. I won't be long, Betty. OK, look. Just stretching us legs. Right, old duck. I say, Betty. What? If we're not back in three hours, send for a search party. <laughs> come on, let's get going. No, cracking. Betty, we'll be back by... Uh... Hellfire, have you seen the time? Well, hey, there's plenty of time. It's five o'clock. Oh, it's never. It is. How long did it take us to get here? Oh, best part of half an hour, love Oh, it. we'd better be getting our skates on. Come on, it's quicker on the way back. What? Mrs. Walker will be doing flipping handstands. What about our walk? Oh, some other time, Chuck. Why didn't you say some it earlier on? Come on, Betty, love, give me hand with this lot. Come in, lovey. Never mind. Go on, get in the car if you want to get back. I'll do it. Oh, well, if you say so. The flaming well do. Go Come on, on love, turn them Oh, yeah. Have you? Yeah, what's about, Roddy? But he's, he's such a miserable devil, isn't he? Take the notice on me, don't mean it. Take the notice and make me sick. Well, come on. I don't care. Come on, let's get off of him. Oh, Fred! What now? Thanks, Chuck, for a lovely afternoon. Yeah, that goes for me and all, love. Get in the car. Take the notice. Fred! We're moving! Pull the handbrake on! I've pull got it! it. The handbrake! Pull it up! Pull it! Pull it! I am doing! Pull it harder! I can't! Oh, pull it harder! Oh, Look! Are you just going to stand there, eh? Watching us drown? We're sinking, you know. We're up to our ankles. Why did you pull the flipping handbrake up? Oh, oh. I did put it on! It came straight oh. up! How do you mean, straight out? It can't have come straight out. I've just had the flaming thing fixed at Young Tilt as he's been there all week. Look, save that for the insurance man, all right, lovey? Yes, for God's sake, do something before we're up to us next. If I throw you the keys, can you catch them? Start the car. Don't be so damn silly. We're dead budge. One move and this thing will start floating. You got the keys. You're the driver. You get out here and start it. Yes, come on. Rapid. Man. Come on, Fred. Come on, you Jesse. Hang on. Standing there like... Oh, oh, oh my God. God. Hang on a minute. Well, come go. on. Oh, go. Oh. Don't go anywhere. We're stuck here. No lifeboats. All hands to the pumps. Waiting for the band to start up. Nearer my God to thee. And he stood there, covering himself for the flaming inquest. Oh, sit, sit still, will you? Slam the boot and we're launched. Keep bobbing about and we'll be seven fathoms under. Oh, oh. come on. Fred! <laughs> now, gentlemen, before I take your orders, I must tell you that I cannot offer normal service. But they all have slightness. They shouldn't be allowed, not bad. Now, to written their contract, no industrial action. I'll tell you what, any legislation to that effect would have my unqualified support. And may I say that if it included dustbin men, it would have mine. But as it happens, there is no question of my employees being out on strike. I know, you fired them. <laughs> they are not on strike. They have not been dismissed. The unfortunate fact is that I trusted them and they have betrayed my trust. Oh, they've scarred, have they? Well, they're taken. I saw G weighing up the blind box last night. You've only got to look at his lifestyle. You can see he's a man who's desperate for the ready. Oh, that's a good point. As I've said, gentlemen, I apologise. Now, in the goodness of my heart, I allowed my staff time off. I did all the lunchtime classes, I wiped the tables. They promised me faithfully that they would be here for opening time. And here I am, up to my eyes, and they are out, joyriding. Now, gentlemen, I will take a pie. Please, sir. Oh, Mrs. Walker. Ah, it's no good. It's as dead as a flipping door, eh? Wonderful. Wonderful? It's that young flaming Tilsey that's done this, it is. It's not my fault. 
Look, will you stop fidgeting the pair of you? Slightest movement of the current will catch us. Current? It's a lake, is this, Betty? There's no current. There's more current on a flipping Eccles cake. It's all right you saying that, but I've heard the people being swept away. I suppose it could be worse. Could be in Florida. Could be sharks all over the shop. Well, I know what I'm going to have to do. I'll get out of here, I'll, I'll, I'll go and find a phone, I'll, I'll ring Mrs Walker and I'll explain that we'll be a few minutes late and, uh, oh, and then I'll get, uh, I'll get hold of the AA. Fred, we know you've got a drink problem, but is now the time? I'll give you a little bit of advice. What? If the water starts rising, get the area up and hang your knickers on. <laughs> Won't call any lifeguards, but at least it'll keep the sharks off. <laughs> oh, charming. I bet that phone's been vandalised. And as for Faye, if he's paid his subs, I'm Esther Williams. Are you coming in here, or are you going down to the Rovers to get one in? Are you going to have to do your trip? <laughs> you didn't believe that, did you? That was just to get you moving. <laughs> Sitting there with your knitting, <laughs> waiting for your little old bee to come back from his bank holiday gallivanting. Oh, I should cork off. Buy it, that'll be the day. Oh! Then we're crippling me all the way through the flicks. Do you know, it comes down this morning. It says, get the old iron out, my precious, and press my best strides. I said, oh, I'll get the old iron out, Your Majesty. I said, I'll wrap it right round your neck. I just come out of Jim's calf and this fella tooted me in a mini. I'm sure it was your Jack. In a mini? Won't be our Jack, will be worse trousers. <laughs> oh, that's better. Then we're killing me all through that picture that you said was so marvellous. Mm. Right, are you all set, Galapus? Yeah. Where are you going? Well, we're going down to Rovers for a few bevies, you know. Then we're going to dive out of there for the 59 bus, see what's happening uptown. Yeah. Do you fancy a night out? Well, I'll have a bath like Rosie Long later. Oh, right. right, we'll see give you till half past seven. That's all right, kid. Hello, Mrs. Goodwin. I'm back. I can't accept that we're finished, you see. I'm sorry I hit you. I broke in. Been sitting here all afternoon. It costed me a fortune, you know, London and back twice in a week. For God's sake, say something. I'm running a bath. If we don't want a flood, we'll have to turn the taps off. Well, turn the rotten taps off. I want to talk. Whatever you want. I'm going upstairs and I'm getting dressed. It'll take about five minutes. Well, what's five minutes between man and wife? <laughs> I thought we had forever. I'm telling you, Terry. I'm going to get dressed. I'll be down in five minutes. You're still here when I come down. I'm ringing the law. You've broken in, you've used your fists. Five minutes. Deal. Oh, boy, I can ready for it. Chuck us a bit of rag, will you? Hey! Bank holiday, 1983. Well, a fellow wants his van on the road. The job in builder. It's knackered without it. Fifty quid in my hand if I crack it by tomorrow. Any chance, do you think? Well, uh, if my assistant mechanic gets a finger out. Hey, no, 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 you. no. <laughs> and we should have it cracked by eight. Yeah, my fingernails be cracked by them as well. Well, you did say you could do an old chance, didn't you? Go on. Hello, Tilsley's Garage. Uh, just a minute, I'll check Mr. Philip Tilsley's availability. Who's speaking, please? Three, two, two one. one. Yes, Mrs. Walker. What can I do for you? Hello, Brian. I didn't realise you had a secretary. Uh, well, I do now and then. I'm calling about Fred, actually. He's not back yet. And things here are desperate. 
And in view of the fact that he took the car before the repairs were completed, I've been wondering if the faults were such that they might have led to a breakdown. Well, then I'll repeat what I said when I called Mrs. Walker. There was nothing seriously wrong. But having said, uh, if it has broken down, he's only got himself to blame. I mean, normally customers don't take cars out without, without having my signature on the chitty, which is confirmation that uh, all repairs as orders have been carried out. Listen. I should give them another hour, then ring the AA, see if they've asked for assistance. No trouble. Thanks, Mrs. Walker. Bye. Ahoy there! Come on, sailor girls, look lively! Where have you been? We're down towards last distress rocket! Where do you think I've been? I've been looking for a flaming phone booth, haven't I? They don't grow on trees round here, you know. Anyway, the top and bottom of it is I've got a taxi boat. A taxi? Have I been towed up? Well, uh, I couldn't get the AA. My membership's lapsed. Uh. Ask him if he's phoned MW. Have you phoned Mrs. Walker? Well, no, I, I couldn't. I haven't got any more change. No more change, see. Well, Mount Ferret, we'll just have to get his feet wet. Oh, no, Betty. No. Not on your life. That ex-member of the AA out there is going to carry us. Oh, much more respectable. I'm telling you, Terry, you've got ten seconds to get through that door. You won't get the police. Won't you? Just watch me. You won't get them because I've taken the wires out. Oh, I haven't ripped them or anything. I just undid a couple of screws. You're mad. You start raving bonkers. You're round a twist. I must be. I married you. Listen, we made a mistake. I've accepted that one. But I can't accept it. Susie, I'm in love with you. Why do you have to be such a cow? Oh, and I'm supposed to stand here all dewy-eyed while you use me as a flaming punch bag, am I? Listen. I know things got lousy those last weeks in London. I didn't measure up. I lost my job and I loafed around, but Susie, I'm sorry. I've learned my lesson. You punch me in the face and come here cringing. I'm not cringing. I'm fighting to save our marriage, right? Look, my car's round the corner. We can be in London before the pub's shut. I'm not getting through, am I? Terry, we're all washed up. I'm telling you for the last time, if you don't start making tracks into that road, I'm going after I'm screaming my head off. Well, go on, then. Scream. Scream till you're blue in the face. Call the police. Go and have me nicked. But I'll tell you something. Before they get their hands on me, I'll get in my car and I'll drive flat out of the first wall I come to. Get a good hold. And gone. Oh, for goodness sake. Mammy, are you all right? Are you all right there? And gone. Well, hold on then. Arm oh, Fred. Uh, there you are, Chuck. Are you all right? Are you all right? I'm stuck in the mud. Well, go on, you <laughs> duck David. Oh, oh, oh. Don't forget to come back for me, Fred. Oh, keep over, Betty. It's only up to your knees. Listen, my knees get chilled, I'll be crippled. Never mind your knees are about my flaming back. Oh, sure. Can't stand much of this flaming punishment, I can't. <laughs> Frederick, my boy, things were bad. You had more than enough to answer for before. But now you have put the top hat on things with a vengeance. Oh, belt up, will you? You have done me and my gorgeous new outfit the final, the most unforgivable mischief. Not content with doing your damnedest to try and feed me to the flaming fishes. You have put me down, right slap bang, in the middle of a flaming cow plop. Oh, yes, I appreciate your position, Mrs. Walker. But I'm sorry, I can't help you because I'm, I'm meeting Victor in half an hour at Sandry Trade Hall. He's got tickets for a jazz concert. But the one that is not returned, Mrs. Walker. Does he look like it? He's not wrong. He's not heard anything. Not a word. 
I suppose I couldn't prevail on you, could I, Marion? Well, we were planning a quiet evening by the fireside. Yeah, we're going to get some cheap ale and oafs in there, put our feet up in the parlour, you know. Oh, see, yes. Give us a couple of pints of better, will you, love? He's a demon at double top. You're up all day, isn't he? Sure, this might be number, right? That's right, yeah. Indeed. I'm not me, obviously. The fellow wants to play me. So, so have a look at the ones you've got here. Yeah, I know, I know. We owe you for Mr. Ogden, I stand here, deserted by my entire staff, the bar on the siege. If the feathers are not to your satisfaction, then I am sorry. Mrs. Walker, please can I have a gin and tonic, a vodka and orange with ice, two packets of crisps, one plane, one plane. Elsie, darling, you are gorgeous, but I think you're jumping the queue. Hey, listen, I'll have, I'll have 20 facts. Ladies and gentlemen, it may have escaped your notice, but willing hands ready to die in your service are at the moment rather thin on the ground. Do you mean you're on your jacks, Mrs. Walker? <laughs> I'm very much the lone ranger. Surrounded by tasty Indians and no sign of the cavalry. <laughs> Uh, steady the buffs. No, seriously, I have often thought you might have a vocation for bar work. Ah, uh, no, Mrs. Walker, I'm strictly one of them thirsty Indians. I tell you what, why don't we ask Susie? I mean, she'd come round like a flash if she thought it was a couple of quid in it. Great idea, yeah. Beats the cavalry, doesn't it? I'll go and get her, eh? Uh, Geronimo, you'll stay where you are. I suppose I could give her a ring. Well, why not? She's at home now. Hey, I'll tell you what, Mrs. Walker, you'll give Susie a tinkle, and me and Elsie long for her. If you're sure you can cope. Of course we can, Mrs. Walker, no danger. Right, wagons in a circle, shoot and sit white for their eyes. Get on with it, you daft tape. Right, line them up, gents. It's Dodge City Prices. A shot of the red eye, calamity. Just a sweet cherry. Well, I found your bag, anyhow. Found a few of your things. Are you packing them or shall I? Look, I don't know where all your stuff is, do I? Well, I don't know what you need. You need testing, don't I? You what? I said I need my head testing for getting mixed up with you. Now, don't start that. Don't start the cracks. That's no way to sort ourselves out, is it? Oh, blimey. Well, you need your stuff in London, won't you? I don't want you moaning at me because you forgot your toothbrush or something. I will not be moaning about my toothbrush or anything else because I'm not coming to London with you or anywhere. Let's stop playing these daft games, eh? Susie! Are you in? What's up with the phone? I've been ringing and ringing. Oh, yes. Where did Laughing Boy spring from? He broke in, didn't he? And lay in wait. I would have phoned the police, but he knows all about wires. Now he's threatening all sorts. He's going to do himself in. Oh, no kidding. No kidding, Mrs Tanner, or whatever your name is. Oh, don't worry, Sunshine. I know you're the type that means what he says. Or well, whatever type I am, I don't need your flannel, so keep your nose out. Keep my nose out? How flaming dare you? You break in here, you mess about with my phone, and then well, what... All the phone needs is the wires reconnected, and you know how to use a screwdriver, don't you? Come on, we're going. Get lost. Oh, for God's sake, put a smile on your face, you dozy slag. I'm carrying your flaming bags, aren't I? Get out of here, get some help, go on. Oh, this is a private matter between now, look, me and my wife. Monkey, I've had enough of your tricks. Look, get out of the way. I'm not budging. So unless you want this to get very, very nasty, and sit down there and get a grip on yourself. They could have had an accident, you know. Yeah. Oh, give over. I mean, if they've had an accident, I wouldn't mind betting they broke them down outside a blooming pub. <laughs> oh, thank God I found you. I've been knocking at Hilda's, so thought you'd be there. What's up? It's that flaming nutter again, isn't it? Nutter? He's in there with Elsie. Two wrong words, he'll give it or give me. Get over there. I'll go with you, Eddie. Flipping Emma. You have a day in the park, you come in for a bottle of summit. You don't mind looking after the shop, do you, love? <laughs> in here. Yeah. Where is he? Upstairs. What's he doing? He went to the bathroom. Look, let's get this straight. You've got this fella here and you've asked him to... Oh, leave. brilliant. Yeah, well, be fair, we can't come in here throwing our weight about until we know the full story, can we? Has he threatened you else? Said a few things. Sat down in that chair. I told him a few home truths and he shot off upstairs. Look, don't be kidded. He can seem all right than going these terrible tempers. He could be up there cutting his throat. He's threatened also. He's going to drive his car into a wall. Perhaps I'd better go up and see. Hey, let's not get too heavy-handed. Look, if he's up there committing suicide... Is this your toothbrush? Yes. That's my toothbrush. Shall I pack it, then? Oh, do what you like. Look, son, don't you think you'd better start being a bit sensible? Look, she doesn't want you. There's nothing down. 
It's like you're six nil down against Liverpool at Anfield. All you've got to save is your dignity. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I know what you mean, all right. Don't worry. See, I've lost, can't I? I mean, you could have been playing hard to get, but then you wouldn't have needed the heavy mob, would you? Goodbye. Thanks for nothing. Listen, son, if you're driving... Who said I was driving? You said you had a car. You said... I say a lot of things. Don't you? Like in church? It's Biz that cheerful as keeps him going. Ha <laughs> 64 kilos. Oh, no sign. Uh, well, not a dicky bird, Mrs. Walker. Susie turned up. Well, she should be here in a minute. What is really annoying is that they even haven't had the consideration to telephone. Me off your bum. Perhaps they weren't fit before. <laughs> Look, does he? will depress you. No, the price does. Come for a little trip, he says. In the Rover, he says. We end up shipwrecked, marooned, and covered in camels. <laughs> hey! What? I deserve a flipping life saving medal, and these two won't split on a blooming taxi fare. Hey, what happened? Don't talk to me. Ask him. I'm beyond words. I'll tell you what happened, Len. I've only saved him from a watery grave, that's all. This one's kidding on she's got a sprained ankle, but when it comes to pay for the taxi fare, oh, yes, moving like blooming grease lightning, aren't you? I trust you had an enjoyable trip. Fred enjoyed this trip, Mrs Walker. Two staggers, one twirl. We end up in three foot of water. Charlie Chaplin would have been sick with that. Oh, very droll, very what droll. What's our Mrs Walker? It was Fred. He got this Maybe. idea the rover could float. <laughs> Bet if you don't mind, I... I'm in no mood for jokes. We have had an extremely fraught hour and a half. I am not feeling 100%, and if Mrs. Duckworth hadn't kindly stepped into the breach, we would have had to close the doors. I'll hear your explanations in the living room. That's the dog's home. Get oh, on, my Fred. It's all well, else. Well, what do you mean, not coming? Uh, just hang on a minute. My feet are absolutely please. screaming. Oh, why, couldn't, couldn't one of you put the flaming handbrake? Oh, oh, shut, shut your face. face. Just had enough. Huh? Well, you can't leave me to face these thirsty hordes on my own, you know. Oh, well, if she's feeling poorly, you'd better tuck her up in bed, kid. Anyway, to tell you the truth, it flaps over. Yeah, the back and the face of music, kid. And that look on her ladyship's face, you'd like my mother used to say, when my father had blood red money in, it's blood for supper. <laughs> well, if the story you've told me bears any relation at all to the facts... Could we make it up, Mrs Walker? I mean, could we? Then, in my opinion, you're extremely fortunate there's something more serious Mrs than Walker, you. Mrs Walker, with due respect, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if this is a court of inquiry and you're the judge, well, is this down to me? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, you slammed that boot lid down as if you were launching the Flaming Queen Mary. The flaming thing came off in her hand, didn't it? Oh. I got that young Tildy to repair it. I'm paying good money for dodgy repairs. As it happens, the repairs were not dodgy. Well, dodgy? Look at it. Look. The repairs dodgy. were not dodgy because the repairs were not carried out. Oh, well, that's it then. That's it. Well, if you want new clobber, you dry clean it, Do everything like that. Go and see young Tildy. Can I finish? Well, I'm vindicated, Mrs. Walker. That's me. <laughs> now, the facts, as I have established them, are that the car was taken before the repairs were completed. You what? Know, and in the absence of the responsible mechanic. Responsible? That twit. And the person who took the car, under those circumstances, without proper authorization and for the sake of a joyride, was the person who was to blame for the subsequent mishaps. And that person, correct me if I'm wrong, was yourself. It's just this last note, and we're done. We need to collect our Nicky from Jackie. He bags me first in the bath. Ah, oh, not showing tonight then. Oh. We're short. It's me, Fred. Best let him in. Would you? I can't do it till tomorrow. You're telling me you can't. She'd never have taken it, you know. Shouldn't I? Some flipping system you've got here, Brian. Well, it generally works okay when people aren't rushing you. Well, it didn't work this time, did it? All right, Gail made a mistake. Just fetch it in tomorrow, you'll have it back by I dinner. I can't fetch it in tomorrow. Why not? Because I put the boot lid down, dinner. 
The handbrake didn't work on the flaming thing. It went down a grass bank and it's ended up in the middle of a flipping lake. You're kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not kidding, Brian, and I don't like it. My back's gone. My feet are all blistered. I'll tell you something else, sunshine. I want you to get that car, get it out, get it all tidied up, and I want it all doing and the towing all free of charge. Hey, hey, right? Hey, hey, just a minute. You're asking a lot. Are you denying liability? Did you or did you not, Gail, tell me that that car was all right to take? Well, to some extent. You've admitted liability. That's it. Look, sunshine. Here's a map. See that lake there? See it? Get hold of it. That's where the car is. I want you to go, get on your bike and go bring the car and fix it. Right? Right? Right. Maggie takes everything that's tried. Ah, oh, well, newborn babies are everything and so much else besides. I should know. I've had two of the little monsters. Does uh, Mike know? I've no idea. Hasn't just anything. Well, he wouldn't, would he? I mean, it's not something you want to shout over the rooftops, is it? Not under the mm -hmm. circumstances. It's tragic, really. I mean, for two people like that to break up, they've got so much going for them. Yeah, I know what you mean. Still talking about me, are you? No, we are not. Other people have problems in their lives, you know. Yes, I know. There's always somebody worse off. Well, that's supposed to be a comfort to you, beats me. Watch your cock. Got your little self dried out, did you? Listen to me, lady. The next time you want a chaperone, you go and get yourself an Alsatian. One us can swim. Elizabeth, and I thought I was doing you a favour. A lovely day out in the country. All that fresh air to fetch roses to your chubby little cheeks. Oh, get off. All it's done for me is give me nightmares. I've been trapped in this, this flaming submarine. Five fathoms down with 200 randy sailors. Why don't I have nightmares like that? Listen, when you get to be my age, love, you'll not think so lightly of it. Mm. Do I say in that case I've got another 40 years to wait? Or do I resist? No, I should be nice to her today. The poor old love's had a shock. Mm. Aye, aye, all hands on deck. It's Captain Nemo himself. All right, all right. Let's get the wise cracks out the way, Lynch. Oh, I shan't make any cracks, Fred Face, because you see, I don't think it were funny. And neither would you, if you'd have been sat on your fat little bum in that car when it rolled into the lake. You wouldn't think it were no laughing matter, neither. I didn't think it was a laughing matter. I'm very upset about the whole incident. Good. That makes three of us. Me and my colleague have suffered severe financial and emotional hardship as a result of what happened. Just wait till I get my hands on that young twerp, Tilsley, and I'm telling you, oh, oh. What hardship? Item. One pair of shoes ruined. Cost 30 quid. 30 quid? Pair of shoes you give over. You never pay 30 quid for a pair of shoes in your life. 59 and 11, more like. 59 and 11? Hey, Betty, oh. all this time, I thought he were a fella. Turns out he's a fossil. Oh, you God. give us a very nasty fright. A fright? What do you think I got? I nearly got a flaming hernia counting you to out of that lake. What do you expect us to do, love? Swim? You could have paddled. It was only six inches deep. God, God. Paddle? Oh, hey, Betty, happen we should have took us buckets and spades. We could have had a real treat. Look, are we going to hold a post-mortem all day or what? Look, those shorts need stocking up and we need a, a new barrel, Freddy. I'm not bringing nothing up from that cellar. Oh, no. I've been up all night with me back, haven't I? I've been up all night having nightmares. <laughs> oh, I shan't tell you what I've been up all night with. But he had a lovely breakfast before he left. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. I mean, as far as I knew, it was all organised. Well, no, I left all that to Neil. Very capable lad. He's never let me down before. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I made him captain of the flipping team. Oh, hang on a minute. Come in! Yeah, well, I don't blame your lads for being fed up, but, uh, look, Tim, all I can do is apologise and say I'll look into it. Yeah. I'm sorry we wasted their time. And yours. Yes. OK, well, it won't happen again. All right, bye, Tim. Pam Mitchell, Weatherfield Recorder. Yes, I do remember. We met at the protest meeting over the disco. Sorry about the way that went. Are you? I thought you were all in favour of it. As I remember our conversation, I didn't come down firmly on one side or t'other. Comfy on the fence? I run a newspaper, Mr. Barley. It's a free sheet, it's new, it's struggling to survive. I have to be practical. Which means don't offend the advertisers. Absolutely. They are our lifeblood, after all. But at the same time, I have to consider our readers. If circulation is going to rise, as I hope it will, then we have to give them the kind of editorial stuff that accurately reflects their own lives and problems and attitudes. Purely local issues. For the moment. I don't plan on having a Washington correspondent just yet. So, either way, you couldn't lose. You got Baldwin's custom, or you got a damn good story. As it happens, I got both. 
I presume you've read it. Yes, I have. I have. Gave a pretty fair account, I thought. Thanks. But I mean the paper as a whole. Yes. Might I ask why? Why I'm here, you mean? Simple. I want to know what you think of the recorder. A frank opinion? It's the only kind I'm interested in. How about a cup of coffee first? Soften the blow. It's half ten, and I always have a cup of coffee at half ten. Then who am I to interfere with time-honoured rituals? I brought you a nice bun for your eleven. Ooh. Wash your hands first. You talk to me like I were Nicky sometimes. You behave like Nicky sometimes. He don't wash his hands without telling either. You busy? Hard to die, I am. Goes and fits and starts lately. Still, there's quite a lot of paperwork once seen to. There's always a lot of paperwork once seen to. I reckon when the sound of last trump, there'll be a regiment of little slaves like me to fill in all those relevant forms for. Ah. So why have you come, then? So I like having so much to grumble about. And because I know how lucky I am. Especially when I see Susie. Well, what's up with her? I don't know. She's gone very strange lately. I popped in to see her on my way here. We used to be the best of mates, never had any secrets from each other, but now... I don't know. Well, you've not got so much in common these days, have you? I mean, she's a glamorous, unattached young girl about town. You're an old married housewife and a mother. <laughs> hey, never mind feeding your face. What about my flaming car, Brian? What about it? I thought it was all right. Well, it's not flipping all right, is it? All right, I've got it out of the water. I've got it out of that lake, but it's there. It's stuck on the flipping garage forecourt. Oh, should have dried out overnight. Should have no problem fetching it back. I'm not fetching it back, sunshine. I'm not risking life and limb driving a car with no flipping handbrake. Give over. Well, can't they fix it there? The garage where it's at? Well, of course they can, but he'll get the bills, won't he, your husband? Plus some expenses that I'm going to bung him as well. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll run you out there in the van and you can drive her back in. I'll get it right. Oh, give over, will you? You drive the car, I'll drive the van. The van's not insured for anybody else but me and Ron. Yeah. OK, I'll do it when I get there. I should be about an hour or two looking. You'll afford. Yeah, of course. Oh, and Gail, don't let any other poor mugs go out with a car with only half an engine, will you? I mean, you don't know what an engine is, do you? You know. Now, hang on a minute. It's all right, Brian. Come on. Away. Well, I'm not a professional, of course. Go on. Well, I think it's good as far as it goes, but uh, it doesn't go far enough. I mean, you may think it expedient to sit on the fence on occasions but your article shouldn't. This comes through the letterbox, unsolicited and without charge. Now, that's enough to make most people around here regard it with suspicion, or even worse, to totally ignore it with all the other bump for re-roofing and 24-hour plumbers. Now, as I see it, it's no use being ladylike and whispering. You've got to yell. Be positive, punchy, controversial. Yeah, especially controversial. I don't believe in controversy for the sake of it. Well, you wouldn't have to manufacture it. I mean, it's all around us here if you're campaigning on local issues. Most people will worry vaguely about nuclear war or Marxist infiltration. But what gets them really het up is an increase in their rates or a cut in the bus services, something that touches them 24 hours a day. So you're saying I should stick my neck out more? Yeah, sure. Let them argue with you. Let them write you nasty letters. But at least they'll be reading you instead of using you to write the fish and chips in. Well, for a non-professional, I'd say that was a fairly professional summing up. Well, you did ask me. Oh, I'm still wondering why. Because at that protest meeting, you impressed me as just the sort of person you've described. Somebody who knows what touches people's lives around here and who isn't afraid to stick his neck out. I wouldn't have thought you were, either. Look, you're a woman with strong views, you must be, or you wouldn't be here in the first place. Air them, that's all. Could get a little one-sided. Well, haven't you got any other contributors? Ah. Well, Mr Barlow, Ken, that's where I was hoping you might help. How would you feel about writing a piece of the recorder? Any local issue you like, as long as it's positive, punchy, and controversial. Oh, you've not got dinner again. I've had a letter off him. 
From Terry? But I thought you'd finished up. In the second post. Oh, so he has gone then? Oh, he's gone all right. Well, then what's your problem? You've got what you wanted. You've finally convinced him it's over. It isn't, though, is it? I'm only just beginning to realise that. How did he just bang the doors on your mistakes and that was that? Yeah, yeah. Well, you always go away with him in the past, didn't you? Not this time. You can read it if you like. He says some pretty vicious things. Well, what do you expect? Gratitude? I didn't think it would hurt me. But it does. I'll tell you what hurts, kid. Your bad judgment. You once thought he was the great love of your life. So where did it go wrong? Where did it? And can I be ever sure again? In words of one syllable? No. But he won't stop you trying. It never did me. He also says he wants his engagement ring back. And a gold bracelet he once bought me. And will you? He can go jump. He's had what this ring cost 15 times over off me while I supported him in London. Yeah, it's very petty, though, still, isn't it? He is petty. But at least he's agreed to the divorce. But I think that's going to take some time. Am I right? I thought you'd know about things like that. Funnily enough, Elsie, though I've done most things, I know I've been through a divorce before. You're going to have to wait two years, Kit. Two years? We're only married a couple of weeks. It doesn't matter if you've been married two days. You still have to wait. But it's a flaming lifetime. Look, you don't have to see him. You don't have to communicate with him. You don't have to do anything. And surely you're not going to rush into holy matrimony again all at once, are you? But that's not the point, Elsie. I want to be free. I want the whole lousy mess behind me and start my life over again as me, Susie Birchall. Can you understand that? And now I've got this thing hanging over me for the next two years, no matter what I do. It's like a flaming great chain round my neck. Elsie, I wish I was dead. Were you going to say something, Mavis? No, not really. But it's a bit mucky, isn't it? Is that right? Well, yes, I mean, you usually keep it so spick and span. I mean, I wouldn't have recognised it if I hadn't seen you driving it. Because, I mean, I know you don't always find time to see to it. I mean, I know myself with my little flat, I can't always keep it just as I want it. I mean, what with work... It... At the end of the day, Mavis, this car will be back to its original pristine condition. It will shine, Mavis, inside and out. It'll shine from the up caps to the sparking plugs. You'll be able to eat off the carpet. Oh, I see you're going to spend the whole afternoon on it. Well, you've got a nice day for it. No, Mavis. Somebody, yes, somebody's going to be working the fingers to the bone on this car. <laughs> but it's not going to be me, Mavis. No danger. I haven't put rat poison in it, you know. What? You're going to get too thin, and you're going to get ill and have to go to bed, and I'm not going to look after you. I'm not dieting. No, you're not eating either. How long is this going to go on? You've just told me. Two years. Right, I see. Supposing... Supposing you were suddenly told that you've only got two years left to live. <sighs> what? You're a bright girl. You're pretty. You're ambitious when you want to be. You've got the whole world in front of you. Supposing one day you went to the doctor and the doctor turned around and said to you, I'm very sorry, Miss Birchall, but you've only got two years left to live. Are you getting a bit morbid now? No, I am not. I'm simply pointing out to you that compared to what could happen, this, this little drama of yours is just a pinprick. A pinprick? I wrecked me whole flaming life and you call it a pinprick? Oh, prick. there you go again, dramatising. You have not wrecked your old flaming life. You've got your old flaming life in front of you. OK, so you've made a mistake. A king-size one, I'll admit. But supposing you'd have a kids. Have you thought about that? I've told you, Elsie. We only lived together for a few weeks. Oh, come on. How long does it take? You were with him long enough to get pregnant, weren't you? Oh, I suppose so. But you didn't. So you thank your guardian angel for that. Shh. If you'd have had the worry of kids, you would have had a problem. I know what I'm talking about. I'm qualified to speak. But Elsie... Was... But Elsie, nothing. You've always been a cheeky young so-and-so. 
You've always been ready to reach out and grasp life from either throat. Why do you think I've put up with you for so long? Because I was just like you when I was your age. But I'm not your age anymore. And I can't wipe out my mistakes and start all over again. I've got no more chances left. But you have. And I'm not going to stand here and see you throw away what I'd give my right arm for. You know how to bang you over the end and put some sense in it. Well, I suppose two years isn't that long. Mind you, it seemed like it. If I carry on living with you. If there's one little symbol I hate, it's this one. Which one? Somebody been writing his rude letters again. This little O stroke D on the bank statement. It's only temporary overdrawn. What Ron used to call a temporary cash flow situation. Yeah, well, he could afford to brush it off, couldn't he? He had other fingers in other pies. This happens to be the only pie we've got. But we have got 100% of it. Yeah, 100% overdraft. Terrific. It's not that bad. There's money due in, you know that. You're doing the flipping books. Oh, it's all a bit hand to mouth, though, isn't it? We knew it would be a struggle for a bit when I went on my own. Any road. It was your idea. I know. Are you regretting it? I do when you go on like this. Oh, I'm sorry. I know it'll be all right in the end. And I still think we did the right thing. Being your own boss has its compensations. And its drawbacks. Here comes one of them now. Oh, now no. what? I thought so did you all once today. You mean you hoped you had? Well, I did your car, didn't I? There's nothing wrong with it now. Oh, no. Except next to it, Eddie Yates' bin wagon looks like a flipping royal coach. What am I on about? I'll tell you what I'm on about, Gail. I'm on about the filthy, stinking condition of that car coming out that lake. That's what I'm on about. Oh, you mean it's dirty? Dirty? If you drove a herd of pigs in that car and give them the dinners, they'd run a mile, they would. Oh, it's not that bad. Give over. I've just come down in it. Nearly flipping gas me, Brian. So what do you want me to do about it? I want a full valeting service on it, don't I? I want it waxed and polished. I want it cleaned inside and out. Hey, and underneath as well. I've not got time to do that. Look, take it to a car wash. I'm not going to no car wash, Brian. I want a proper hand job doing, don't I? I want it carved, washed and polished and clean. I want every nut and bolt done. You have got some polish in this place, have you? It's going to cost you. Cost me? Oh, no, sunshine, that's just where you're wrong. It's not going to cost me a brass farthing, Brian. Not a brass farthing. That car's going to be left out there. And tomorrow, I'm going to pick that car up. And that car, Brian, will be a minter. Do you hear me? That car will be in pristine condition, Brian. Pristine. That's if you know the meaning of the word in this... It were horrible. Horrible. My whole life flashed in front of my eyes. I didn't know you were in the water that long. Oh, it must have been terrifying. I know I'd have panicked. You, Mavis, never. Well, I would, Mr Fairclough. I mean, I know I must always seem to be cool and collected to you, but, ooh, in a situation like that, it'd have just gone to pieces. I mean, just the thought of being trapped there with the water rising slowly above your head. How deep was it? That man in shape. That's not the point. <laughs> we didn't know it weren't that deep when we saw ourselves rolling in. Oh, that's true. <laughs> and that is the moment that'll leave me emotionally scarred for life. You weren't scarred this morning, lovey. We were one big giggle to you then. Yeah, well, I'm suffering from delayed shock, aren't I? At least that'll be my side of the story when Fred puts an appearance in. I gather you're not going to let him off lightly, then. Oh, not in your nature, is it, darling? Put the boot in while it's still on their knees. <laughs> That's the Lynch family motto, isn't it? Well, it's better than the Baldwin family motto, which I shan't repeat out of consideration in front of Mavis. Oi. Go and get a visitor service, year or what? I'm right with you, my little flower. Hey, there is a way of getting your own back on G, you know. What's that? You talked about a pair of shoes being ruined. Well, put the bill into him. And I'll bet it didn't do your tights any good either. Ruined? More holes than in an air net. And I've lost an earring. And my new outfit's covered in cow muck. That'll have to go to dry cleaners. And what about you, Betty? I bet you didn't get off scot-free, did you? Well... Uh... There you are, you see. You're about 30 quid down the pair of you. Tell him! Do I get the impression that our fat friend is not one of your favourite people? I love the fellow. He's the salt of the earth. Hang on, light of my life. I'm just coming. It's too late. I can't sit there wasting my time. I could put you on a flaming rock cake. I've got other things to do. It'll be that cabinet meeting he's got to attend. <laughs> oh, you're rotten, you are, Lynch. I know. But I've still got a long way to go before I reach your standards, Baldwin. <laughs> right, Dean. So... Suppose you tell me what this is all about, then. And before you start, just let me tell you that you've caused everyone a lot of trouble. 
It's Tim Halliwell over at the Pendleton Youth Club who organised the thing. There's the kids over there who wasted their evening. There's your mates here who bothered to turn up. And there's me. I mean, I did think that you had a sense of responsibility. That was why I appointed you team captain in the first place, wasn't it? Yes, Mr Barlow. Right. And then, of course, you know who you've let down most of all, don't you? You. Your first proper match. And the captain not only doesn't bother to turn up, but he doesn't bother telling anybody so we can send somebody in his place. I mean, it's not good enough, is it? No, Mr Barlow. No. Right. Well, you're going to tell me what did happen then? I presume you have got a reason. It was Jeanette. Who? My sister. Well, what's she got to do with it? She got knocked down. What? I was just leaving to get to a match when this other kid comes running in and says, Hey, your Jeanette's been knocked down. So I had to get her to the hospital. Hey, just a minute, Dean. Uh, you're not putting me on, are you? No, Mr Barlow. She's got a leg in plaster. Could be worse, the doctor said. But she's whinging so much awful. Right little mourner she is. She's only six, mind. How did it happen, love? Don't know, really. She was playing out in the street, and this car comes along. The bloke swears he never saw her. Wait a minute, you live on Clifton Road, don't you? So any road, I had to get to the hospital. And then I had to go and find my mum and dad and tell them. And where were they? In Red Lion. Oh. So any road... That's it's all right, right Dean. No, you don't need to do any more explaining. I'm sorry, Mr Barlow. No, I'm sorry, Dean. I'm sorry, I misjudged you. I'm sorry I blew up at you, but most of all, I'm sorry about Jeanette. OK. Yes, Mr Barlow. All right. That's all, then? Yeah, that's all, Dean. Bye, Bye, Bye. Bye. Oh, poor little Lou. I'm sorry, Ken. I wouldn't have interrupted for the world if I'd known. <coughs> That's all right, Ellen. Well, I thought since we couldn't have our intimate little dinner out, we'd have an intimate little dinner here. How's this? Chicken chow mein and king prawns cooked as they do them in Old Pekin. Well, at least as they do them in Old Bessie Street. I know it's not the Piccadilly, but it does have one advantage over our place. It hasn't got Uncle Albert butting in every five minutes, bless him. I thought he'd gone out. No, he came back. Here we are. I've even got some wine. Uh, shall I leave the paper on just in case one of the kids comes down? You know where he lives, don't you? Um, Clifton Road, did he yeah, say? Yeah, and you know how many kids have been knocked down there recently? Um, oh, hang on a minute. Clifton Road, isn't that where they're campaigning for a new footbridge over the road? When was that? I don't know. Last summer? Yeah. Yeah, it must have been. Just before the end of the summer term, because we were saying it was a lot worse in the school holidays with the kids playing about. Them. Yeah, last summer, and still nothing's been done. Still kids are being knocked down while the parents are boozing in pubs. Well, they don't all. Oh, no, enough do. Running away from their responsibilities. As do the council. As do the social services. Everybody just passing the buck. Well, what can we do about it, though? Um, we'll have to manage without soy sauce. Ah, but we can do something about it. At least I can. Thanks to Miss Mitchell and the Weatherfield Recorder. Oh, uh, hang on a minute, love. I know you want to write a good article, but don't you think this sort of thing sounds a bit... A bit what? Well, you do work for the council, don't you? And don't you think you ought to be a bit cautious before you go jumping in? I've spent my whole life being cautious. And I reckon it's high time I stopped. May I speak to the manager, please? Oh, you are the manager. Could I introduce myself? My name is Susie Birchall, and I believe I'll boost sales in your lingerie department. Hello. Good morning. I believe you're the manager. Could I introduce myself? My name is Susan Birchall, and I believe I'd be a great boost to your cosmetic department. Hello. I'll see! Kettle's on! Got up fast! Oh, are yeah. you the manager? Are you the manager? Good morning. I believe you're the manager. You look a right slag. Why did you get up in the morning and catch some worms? <laughs> you tough beggar. <laughs> oh, my landlady, I presume. Could I interest you in a waterbed? You can interest me in your rent. That's what you can interest oh. me in, Miss Personality Plus. Hey, greedy guts. Who's grabbed all the bread? What, no bread? Two crusts and that's it, and one of them says, so Stanley, you could stick a brush head in it. Well, flaming heck. Thank you very much for your vote of confidence. Here's me, up with the lark, new leaf well and truly turned over. And what do I get from you? You don't even bat an eyelid. I'm too worn out to bat an eyelid. Shan't get to work if all we've got cornflakes. Oh, crimes are mighty. If this is what having a job does for you, I don't think I want one. Hey, madam. Good luck. I mean all. 
Good morning. I believe you're the manager. Could I introduce myself? My name is Susie Birchall. I have no credentials. My experience is very limited. But you'll find me very lovable. And your wife will never find me. Luck, my darlings, has nothing to do with it. Oh, and by the by, I've quit my bus fare. Yes. Oh, God. Reckon she'll change, dear. Oh, I reckon she'll never lose her guts. Oh, look at that flaming time. Hey, and don't take all that time in the bathroom, either. Not the day to be late, is it? No, no. Not with Birchall on the prowl, it's not. I'm just going to a young tills, Liz. See if it's finished my motor. Having it waterproofed, are you? Eh? Hey? Having the lifeboats fitted? No, oh, belt up. Never yeah. mind, belt up. Come in the Captain Bly touch. It's a wonder I'm not here on flaming crutches. Crutches? You? You want a dose of my back, you do. Yes, and you want to try wearing these shoes because they're crippling me since they got soaked in that car. I wouldn't mind, but I paid 14 quid for them not a fortnight ago. Oh, stop moaning, will you? I'm in the same boat. Same boat, my Aunt Fanny. They were your car, weren't it? Up to us ankles in mucky water. I've told you it's not down to me. How's Popeye this morning? Oh, give over, will you, Betty? Huh? Hey, you're worse than her, you are. She's flipping bad enough. <laughs> Can't win, can you? How's it going? And Nib's in a good mood. She's gone to their journeys for the day. I take it uh, Fred's not going to cough up. My shoes are ruined, you know, Betty. Oh. All that new gear's got to go to the dry cleaners. What do you get when you tell him? Go and see Brian Tilsley. We could for the shame of it. I mean, he's paying out enough as it is. I mean, Fred's piling it on, isn't he? Nevertheless, Betty, lass, we should have summit. Mm. And if I can't squeeze it out of our fat friend, the demon motorist... You'd think Her Majesty would take it out of his wages, wouldn't you? Mrs Walker? No. Mm. She's washed her hands of it. Mm. No, it's no use. We're going to have to bill him, send him an account. Hey, tear it up. Well, we'll have to send him another, like the gas people do. But if we keep tearing them up, they'll come round and cut it off. I mean, what's Fred got that we could cut? Ah, Betty, I won't answer that if you don't mind. No. But what I will say is, we're going to have to be crafty about the bill. Yeah. We're going to have to inflate it. Be a rubber bill, will it? No, it will not be a rubber bill, Betty. It will be an inflated bill. Oh, like, get it up to 100 quid and then it'd be overjoyed to settle for 20. 10 out of 10 and 2 stars. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's make a start. Item one, mm. my shoes. Item two, your shoes. Yeah. Item three, dry cleaning bill. Mm. Item four, your tights, my fishnets. Fishnets? Oh, don't put fishnets. It looks as if we knew we were going to end up in the lake. Item five, my earrings. Hmm. Sighted floating in the Irish Sea. Considered a danger to shipping. <laughs> Check the under ceiling, have you? Yeah, I did. Oil, what about the oil? Every last drop. Nine quid's worth. All right. Have you checked the exhaust? Look, Fred, your motor's in A1 condition, all right? Now, all I want you to do is shift it, because I've got vehicles out there that money jobs, OK? Hey! Have you seen this? On your bike, Fred. On my bike? I will be on my flipping bike. This can cause corrosion, you know, Brian. Corrosion? You've been coming to me with your flaming false teeth next saying they're corroded. All right, no need to shout. Well, stop coming to the Oracle, Fred, and do me a favour. Sign for your blasted jam jam and get mobile. I've got a living to earn. We've all got livings to earn, haven't we? I'm only doing what I think's right, that's Look, all. Just sign your name on the chitty and get your car out on the road. Well, you mean if I sign this, it means I'm satisfied and you're released, is that it? All it does, Fred, is it states that all repairs are being completed and that, in my opinion, your vehicle is now roadworthy. I stated that before, didn't it? Not on paper! Look, you came in here and took the car on Gail's Nod. Now, I've accepted that Gail's Nod put the firm up the creek. <laughs> put me up the creek? I know where it put you. I've accepted partial liability and I've put things good, which has cost me. All I'm saying, Fred, is don't push your luck. Well, I mean, it's all right, but you can't blame me if you and poor young bits of girls here, can you? I could have blamed you. I could have made a case out of this. If I'd have had money to play with, I would have had a good case. All right, Brian, go on. You played the white man, and I do appreciate it. All right. There you are. Fair enough. Let's call it quits. Now, like I said, I need the room. Look, I'm sorry about this, Brian, but, I mean, the financial pressure that I've been under, I couldn't avoid it. There was no alternative. Oh, don't come it, Fred. You're not exactly on the street selling shoelaces, are you? Look, Brian, credit where credit's due. I could have taken you to town, couldn't I? <laughs> Don't say how. I've done everything bad by you and you and... I've been under a lot of pressure, Brian, haven't I, from them two? One of you, tights, skirts, claim for personal liability. Wanted me to bung a case against you? I said, there's no way. There's no way I'm going to put a case against young Brian on your behalf. If you want to came against your young Brian, well, you do it yourselves. Do I? Oh, who's this? Hello. 
if it's not Alf for getting its midday off. He was a chap selling things. I don't want to. Oh, Mavis, come in. Well, I'm sorry to bother you. I was just hoping I might catch Ken at home. Oh, uh, no, he'll be off for his dinner, but that's an hour off yet. Is oh. there anything I can do? No, it's nothing really. It's just that, uh, well, he came into the cabin yesterday, I think it was. Canvassing ideas for his article. I beg your pardon? Oh, he's, uh, he's been asked to write an article for this free paper. What is it, the, the recorder? Oh, well, that's interesting. Mm. Uh, no, but articles. Do you know, I never tackled an article yet. I mean, I do write stories from time to time, you know, with my friend, Victor Pendlebury. In fact, you might have heard our last effort. It were on local radio. Oh, the one they broadcast? Mm. No, I must confess I missed it, but I heard some very good reports about it. It's wonderful. It didn't write up. Uh, well, uh, I don't want to linger. If you'll just give Ken these pen refills. Uh, we didn't have them yesterday, but they came in this morning, so I was calling on Emily, and I thought, well, while I'm passing, I'll pop in. I'll give him the good news. All right. Uh, has he not decided yet on a theme for his article? Well, I think he was a bit stuck at first, but uh, now he's decided that he can probably write something about facilities for young people. You know, the way we adults moan about and being out on the streets all the time, but we don't actually look into their needs or try and cater for them. You know? Oh, yes. I so. well, I mean, he should find plenty to say about that. Mm. <laughs> You'd have had more to say if you'd written about pensioners. <laughs> you know, myself, I tend to think in terms of sort of broader topics, like recently I've just had this idea for going walks blindfold. You know, I mean, it could be like a series, like the blindfold walker goes for a ramble in Bluebell Woods or the blindfold walker goes for a trip down the canal bank. You know, sort of trying to recapture the impressions and the sounds and well, creating what Victor would call a, a visual prose picture. Blindfold? Slipping down the canal bank. The only sound you'd have heard of being a big splash you've fallen in. <laughs> the blindfold walker would have a companion, Mr. Tatlock. <laughs> well, uh, I'll be off. You'll give pen and those, won't you? Yes, I will, love. Thanks very much. He'll be writing again tonight, I suppose. I don't know. I suppose it depends if she asks him for anything else. She? Yeah, this woman editor, Mrs. Mitchell. Weatherfield's answer to Marjorie Proops. Oh. Second. Hello. <laughs> um, do you fancy a cup of our plastic coffee? Tell you the gospel truth, I'm in a bit of a rush. Sure I can't tempt you? No, honestly. I've got an advertiser to see, and advertisers being my bread and butter. I'll tell you what, we'll go halves. I always bring two of these things. Otherwise, if not, by the time you traipse down the corridor, it's really giving your fingers some jib. Well, if you insist. <laughs> I keep pleading for thicker cups or shorter corridors. Right, I've got that article, actually, somewhere amongst all this bump. You have come for the article, I take it. Well, I was in the vicinity, and I thought, if by some miracle he's finished the thing, I'll look through it tonight, and if there are no problems, then there it is. Copy. Yeah, here we are. Right, well, would you like me to read you a bit? Oh, goodness, no. I mean, I'm sure you read very well, if I had the time. You're not even going to sort of skip through it? Well, if you could give me a brief sort of summary. It's a monograph on the writings of Proust. Beg your pardon? Never mind. Just read it. I'm dying to. It's just that I'm pushed. Right. Thanks for sharing okay. your refreshments. You can share mine next time. Right. Oh, I'll read this evening at home, if that's okay. Yeah, fine. Bye. Bye. Right, bye. 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 <laughs> hello, Ken Barlow speaking. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, thanks for ringing back. Yeah, I understand your firm have got some club facilities going available on the odd night. Yeah. Well, I was wondering if we could utilise them for the local kids. Yes, I understand that will be difficult and the facility is basically private, but... Look, could I uh, arrange a meeting with your social committee? All right, so she's a month overdue with the rent. She hasn't got a job. There's nothing I can do about it. Look, I know there's nothing on the machines, but I thought there might be something in packing or something like that. Packing? Oh, Susie doing packing? Stand there holding her finger on the knot. Oh, come on. She's a bright kid. She's not all that bad, you know. I'm not interested. Now, just knock it off, will you? Oh. Well, I was only asking. There's no need to ram it down his throat. I know you're only asking. Like the job centre's only asking. Every day I'm inundated with dozens of bright kids. I see. Well, I'm sorry if I've been a pest. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a bit of advice. You pass on it to Susie. Tell her to learn how to walk a tightrope or something and then sing her praises to Lou Grade or someone. Right. Thank you for telling me. There's no need to knock it in with a flaming sledgehammer, is there? Elsie. What? You heard about Maggie having this baby? Yeah, I did hear a whisper. Yeah. I heard myself a small Some friend phoned me up, just by the way, to tell me I was a father. Normally it would have been cigars and champagne, wouldn't it? I 
in a month ago. I don't suppose they'll be invited to the crystal. Tights, personal jewellery, skirt, undergarments, shock and distress. We've been told we could get thousands for that, isn't that right, though? A leading legal expert has given that as his considered opinion. Mm. Personal jewellery? What a load of bunker. The only personal jewellery you've ever had, Lynch, is in a flipping Christmas cracker. Hey, now, wait a minute. They might have a Casey, you know. Oh, go to young Tilsley. He's the fella. Will you be told we are not whistling in the dark here, my lad? <laughs> not by a long job. You're having me on. You want to go back there and jump in that lake? <laughs> jump in the lake. Bessie, will you tell him, or shall I have the pleasure of knocking him court-legged? Oh, Fred, the fact is, love, we've taken advice on this, and we've been told that by asking you for 50 quid, you'll be getting off very cheap. I've already told you, Betty, young Tilsley has had Admitted liability. Hey, now, wait a minute. I'm no mate of young Tilsley, but from the tale I've heard, he's been a right mug. You drove that car away without permission, didn't you? And if that comes out in court and these two ladies make a case of it, you're on very dicey ground. Like Betty said, we've taken advice on this, friend. Yeah, and from your attitude, I mean, we had no option, love. Advice? What advice from Perry Fairclough there? He's never been caught to the bar. The only bar he's been caught to, the one he's flipping leaning on. Listen, we have contacted a solicitor, Mr Clever Clogs, and he's <coughs> taken on our case. So you'll be hearing from him in the very near future. <laughs> Shall we try again, Nicky? Yeah. It's only us and we've come on a bus. How does that feel, a gauge? Feel a gauge. Feel a gauge. I can't see no feel a gauge. You're positive? I'm more than positive. It's a set of little flat tin things. I know what a feel a gauge looks like. And if you'd shift your dirty great big oof, you'd see you were treading on it. Treading on it? Sorry, love. I could have sworn it. Oh. We've pestered what with one thing and another. Shall we oh. come in, Nicky? Yeah. Yeah? Or shall we put the kettle on first and then... Tell you what, instead of brewing up, you can start that bill out for us. I've scribbled all the details down. Scribbles the word. I priced it at four hours. Not gonna make a lot, though. But it's far too long on the timing. Plus, I promised to drop it off for him. You should allow a bit more when you give him these prices. You don't make them keen, you lose the work. It's the name of the game, innit? Competition. I will accept that or jack it in. Silly God's honest truth. The way I feel now, I feel like chucking it in. Be a bit daft, wouldn't it, after all we've invested? Of course it would. So, you know, say the right things to me, like, uh, um, OK, love, what we lose on the swings, we gain on the roundabouts. It's a pity I can't drive, isn't it? Do you think it's worth learning me? I could do the delivering and things. It's kind of long term, isn't it? What we need now is a couple of doddles, a few money earners. And what do I get? I get Fred G and they tell me Bet and Betty are gonna bung a claim in over this lake do. I don't believe it'll be that mean. They'll. I'll tell you. If running a business learns you out, it learns you to expect the worst in fork. All right, all right. Just go down the cellar for five flipping minutes. Hello, Robert's return. Frederick G, yeah, I'm Frederick G. Frederick. <laughs> I'm Frederick G, yeah. You what? No, no, I haven't got a solicitor. I've got a sister in the WAFs, if that's any good. <laughs> you what? Well, send me a letter if you want to. No, I'm not. I'm not coming round to see you. You know where I am. You come here. Oh, well... Oh, all right, then. Well, you do that. Well, right, goodbye to you. Blame it, Oh, blood. Oh, hang about. I'm coming. Just... Hang about. So it's you, then. What's the panic? Panic, what panic? Phone call, emergency. Oh, sorry then, I forgot all about it. It's the overflow at it again, doing an impression at Agra Falls. It'll be the ball cock. Why didn't you say? I could have brought a new one. Hey, is it all right if I go through? I won't find Her Majesty on the throne, will I? No, you're all right. She back from her journeys yet. Uh, I say, Len. Well, you just had a bird on the phone there. It's your lucky day, then. No, 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 it's not that. She uh, works in a firm of solicitors, you know. Oh, I. Well, you know, they you know, like, talk down to you. You know, have you got a solicitor? We'll be writing to you. We're taking instructions, all this business, you know. Have you uh, come into money or something, then? Money? You wouldn't Coco. No, they're a firm of ambulance chasers. Them two bright sparks have set that up. I told you they might have a claim. A claim? It's a stitch-up, is this, Len? If I were you, mate, I'd settle. 
What, 50 quid? They're going to get it at all if you take it to court. And costs, no costs. question. Costs? What costs will they want? And flipping pair of money grabbers. Oh, come on, you've had your pound of flesh out of Tilsley. I've only got what I was entitled to. Come Give on, you've screwed him into the ground. There's no way I'm in his corner, you know. But by the same token, there's no way I'm in your corner on this either. Well, thanks, Len. I could bottle your blood. If I were you, mate, take my advice and settle. Offer them a percentage and do it before that solicitor steps in and all. I'll have to turn your water off. Right, Lucy. You got a six then, didn't you? All right, well, let's see what I can do Just now. a minute, I thought it was my turn. No, of course it's not. We're going anti-clockwise. Sure is me, after Lucy. Listen, keep an eye on him, girls. Make sure you don't cheat. Look at that, a four. Right. One, two, three, four. And get one home. Hello. One, two, three, four. Hello? Oh, yes. Um, could you just hang on a minute, please? Hello. It's for you. Oh. City desk. Bye. Bye. One, Hello, come by. Oh, hello, Miss Mitchell. Huh? It really is me now, isn't okay. it? Yeah. Hello, there Pam. Three? That's what I wanted. Oh, so you managed to read it at last, then? Yeah. Oh, I can't get yes, yes, I see. One, two, three, four. Well, yes, I mean, I take your point about it being more, wanting it to be more concrete and specific, but uh, we don't want to trivialise the thing, do we? No. Anyway, the main thing is that basically it's usable. Great. Smashing. Well, I look yeah. forward to seeing it in print. Yeah, exactly good to All right, well, I'll be seeing you there, Miss <coughs> uh, Pam. Bye. Problems? Well, she's accepted it, but she wants to edit it. Well, it is your first effort. Yeah, I don't mind the odd comma, you know. I just hope she doesn't do anything too savage. Uh, so, Jan? Well, you know, make it bland, again. draw its teeth so it defeats the purpose, which is not me achieving some uh, miracle of jeweled prose, but making a point, you know, doing something that's going to change things. Right, well... Where are we, then? <laughs> You're about to lose the championship. Oh, yeah. hey, look, I must have some shapes to come. <laughs> Did you hear all that bit about calling her Pam? Oh, yes. Amuse me, her type. First sign of formality, and I have to take it by the throat. Right, come on, you two, concentrate. Bet's down. Here we go for a past six. Now, then. And there it isn't. Oh. The two. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. There we, we are. Two. How's life? Rough. How's business, then? Dog rough. Look, I've started over there. I've got most of the piping in. I'm just waiting for the plasterers now and so on. Not lend you mind. I thought you'd be interested. Well, I want a progress report, I'll ask for one, all right? <laughs> Betty, when you're ready, look. Yeah. Ah, sweet martini, is it? Oh, but of course, yeah. Oh. Is, it, uh, is it right that you were here when uh, our solicitor phoned? Uh, yes, yes, I was, yeah. How did Fred take it? Mm -hmm. Panic a bit, did he? He was sweating blood, I'm not joking. <laughs> hey, what's up with Mighty Mouse? He's just jumped down my throat. Well, from what I hear, someone just told him he's become a father. That Maggie something, you know, that girl that chucked him over for another fella. He's been in here since opening night time, you know. He's been chucking doubles down like Prohibition was coming back into fashion. Thank you very much. Keep it, Michael. Ready for another? What? I'm offering to buy you a drink. <laughs> no, thanks. Oh, you're in a nice mood tonight, aren't you? No, thanks, I just don't feel like company, all right? The thing is, I had this brainwave. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, here's me with all my promotional experience, and there's that disco just waiting to be pushed, and who better for the job than yours truly? We're getting Joan Collins. <laughs> oh, come on, Mike, don't be here. Give me a trial. I'd work for peanuts, payment by result. Look, there's nothing doing, and that's flat, all right? Well, thank you and good night. Don't give a girl much pride, do you? Hey, folk clogging each other. This is supposed to be the happy hour and all should be sweetness and light. Well, this is your flipping happy hour. You can stick it. You know, I've been all round town today. Not a kind word, not a light. Can I have a tomato juice, please, Ben? I need the vitamins. <clears throat> do you know, some folk have it made, don't they? Money pouring in, life so well organised, standing with the big expensive drinks, making fun of us poor suckers who make a muck of things. Look, Fred, I've told you a dozen times, I don't want to discuss it. It's in the hands of our solicitors, and you will you'll be hearing in due course. Look, it's palmy, is this, Betty? Mm. Have you thought what it's going to cost you? Because it's not if we win, love. <laughs> look, look, what about a tenner, to, to put it right? Did you hear that? I did indeed, and I hope Len's ears were flapping also. Like sheets on a clothesline. Mm. Because such an offer is an admission of liability before witnesses. Look, never mind all this, Flan. What about a tenner, to put it right, knocking the head all this... Solicitor's business. Well, a, a tenner each. Look, I'll tell you what. Well. Seven fifty a piece. Three fivers. You know, hard cash on the nail. How's that? Oh. 
Oh, well, we'll have to consult before we settle. Huh? What do you think, Your Honour? I would advise acceptance of this offer. Well, you flaming leg pullers. Yellow blue. Right. That's it. Double 80. Oh, the pinching asteroids or something. Who? Hmm? That couple. I mean, you've been staring at them for the past ten minutes at least. It's Beryl Agnew, that is, Betty. I I used to pal out with her years ago. We used to go to Levin's June Pally. Uh, be rum and then we'll sit. Uh -huh. She used to always give me guilt feelings. You know, cos I get a lad and she wouldn't. <laughs> Turn the table to my not she? She has that look. Is that her husband? It's her intended, she tells me. You'll never guess where she found me. No, I haven't got a clue, look. A video dating agency, would you believe? Someone is at home. <laughs> it could be the answer to a maiden's prayer, Betty, my love. Well, it's not me what uses it all. Oh? No, it's Stan. He drowns nearly everything you put in front of him in vinegar. Mm. Still, when you come to think about it, same colour as beer, isn't it? Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> love. Oh, hey, by the way, how's your archer these days? Oh, not so good, Alf. Not so good at all. Steady on. Oh, blast! I'm sorry. Oh. Alf. What? Do you think you could bring yourself to be brutally frank with me? I'll try. What are my chances of finishing up with husband? Slim. Why? Well, you're the same as me, aren't you? You know, you're long past the age of spontaneous combustion. I'm not a flipping haystack. No, you know what I mean, though. I mean, you look across a crowded room and smoke starts coming out of your lugs. That never happened to me when I were in my prime. Oh, it did to me. How often? Well, there was one I remember down at the oldest story of ballroom. There was this girl. She was slim, dark-haired, bright red lips. All right, forget it. I mean, surely I'm still in with a chance of hot flush, even if clouds of smoke are out. Bit unlikely. Anyway, what's brought all this on? Oh, now it's just a... This mate of mine, she's found a fantastic fella. At a lonely arts club, would you believe? Well, a, a video dating agency. So? No, oh, nothing. I'm just thinking of giving it a whirl. Get away. Well, you've already said. I'm not only on the shelf, I'm in the flipping attic as well. Yeah, well, you want to be very careful, you know. I mean, some of those places only have one client on the books, and he's got a heart condition and f false teeth that don't fit. Any port in a storm, Al? Unless, of course, you can give me any reason to hope. No. You're a man of stone, you. Mm. <laughs> Why aren't you down road, Hilda? Well, I've been and come back, haven't I? I can't sit on my backside, you know. I've got two working lives to get through. Where were it you came across your Stan, Elder? Didn't he bend your back in a bow in a tango one night or summer? No, I fell over him in a blackout. Wow. Oh, no. Nothing. Just interested. See you, Cock. Tell you what, though, if I fell over him again, I'd run like hell, even if I broke a leg. <laughs> How long was she here? An hour, if that. You can't clean a rabbit hutch in an hour. No, Mrs. Walker. Mrs. Alden must bring in more dirt and dust on her shoes than she actually removes. Oh, well, another morning spent cleaning up after my cleaner. Oh, well, it's the, uh, it's the end thing, you see, Mrs. Walker. What is? Job sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, I know my tribulations amuse you, but she who pays the piper not only calls the tune, she also has the last laugh. And that remark can be circulated as widely as you like. Good old Fred. Upsetting her before the day's even started yet. You both were only joking, weren't I? Oh, well, that does it. There's only one way out of this rat trap for me. That's on a fella's arm. Mm. So the sooner I get my skates on, the better. Huh. You need your skates on to get a fella. It took you all the time to get one in flipping concord, you. Where's that, Fred? Well, it's only me you've got to upset now, and then you've got your hat trick, haven't you? <laughs> I'll think of some it. Hmm. Well, I don't know where Ken could have got to if he's not over at the centre. Well, it isn't vital that I see him. I just thought he might like an early copy. Keen to see his name in lights. <laughs> well, if I know Ken, and I do, I'm sure he is. Page three. Pardon? His piece. His article. It's on page three. Oh, I see. It's very good, too. Yes, I liked it when I typed it. Oh, you typed it? Mm, I thought it was a bit neat for a fella. Well, I used to be a secretary. 
No problem. When I say a secretary, it was only a very small firm. I used to be a secretary, too. I couldn't get a job in journalism when I first left university, so I had to take what I could get. Secretary to a consultant surgeon. He was very dishy. Lucky you. He used to want to take my pulse a lot. <laughs> And now you're a dreaded housewife. I, uh, I work part-time at the shop on the corner. Do you like it? Being a housewife? Yeah, of course I do. Do you like journalism? Yes, because I'm good at it. Mm. Such confidence. Half the battle in a man's world. And are you a wife? Of any sort? No, and not likely to be. The surgeon was married, was he? No, and he proposed. But the same day I got a job as a junior reporter. So I turned him down. He was stunned. My mother was even more stunned. He was like royalty in her book. I think my mother would have dragged me to the altar. How did you come to meet Ken? Oh, he was the man next door. Well, almost. He's my second husband, actually. You are a glutton for punishment. I must be. Oh, I must go. I've got to start work on next week's paper. Producing a weekly paper is like painting the fourth bridge. You never finished. Still, keeps me out of mischief. Would you tell Ken I'd like to hear what he thinks? Now the article's in print. Yeah, of course. He can write, you know, Ken. Really? Oh, he'll be pleased to hear that. Not Honestly, I'm not kidding you. He looks deep into my eyes and he says, Elsie, you'll make my wife seem very old. Yes, well, you would, wouldn't you? If she was 84. Sure. Oh, Only oh, just, though. You two are asking for a good ironing, I'm telling you. Sure. Sure. I have forgotten what I've come in for. Well, stamp your foot hard on the floor and see what falls off the shelf. Hey, well, a bottle of gin and soap, mate. Mm. Oh, yes. I heard that you were boiled in feathers on Saturday night, don't we? I was not a bit I was just a bit silly, that's all. Yeah. Right. Who's first? Oh! oh. Uh, me. Me. Shall I put yeah. cats down, love? Yes, but are you sure you can cope with all of us at once, Have I mean, can you spare the time? Because if you can't, we can join at you. Yes, hey. dear Elsie, Ivy and Al. <laughs> I can't wait. Get off! <laughs> Alice, have you done? You women did all of that. Come I on, will man. because we've never met a real man, mm. you know, a proper man. Well, you want to do what Vet's doing, then get yourself down to a coaching agency. <laughs> You're kidding. Oh, not... Well, that's what she told me, like. Well, where is it, then? Is it in Manchester? Oh, I don't know. Uh, what do you want? Just a minute. I've read of somewhere opening round here. Yeah, I know I have. Uh, Weatherfield, I know that. What's it oh, called? Yeah, I could have seen it advertised. What's it called? The Bill and Coo Video Dating Agency. <laughs> that's it. The Bill and Coo. I know it's down Victoria Road. Bill and Coo. Get off, Elsa. You're pulling his leg. Honestly, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> hey, well, just wait till I see that bet, Lynch. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you two? Are you trying to frighten me to death? I was surprised at you, Tracy. Go on, show your mum what you found on your nature wall. What is it? Oh, where did you find that? In the pot. It must have fallen out of a bird's nest. Oh, isn't it delicate? You wouldn't think a baby bird could live in something as fragile as that, would you? No. No? Are you going to go and put it with your other things? Yes. Smash right. it off you go. Oh. <laughs> Did you ever collect bird's eggs? Yes, I did. To my shame. Mm. Any more murky secrets lurking in your past? Eh, I could write a book. <laughs> I bet you could. Dinner's nearly ready. Sardines and salad, all right? Yeah, fine. Oh, listen, you had a visitor this morning. Pam Mitchell. Oh, what does she want? She's brought you the recorder. It's on the sideboard. Am I in it? <laughs> Are you in it? I'll say you are. You're on page three. Oh, yeah. Well, Ken? Not the article I wrote. Oh, of course it is. I mean, there's one or two alterations, what yeah. One two? Well, I think it's smashing. You don't. Well, it's not so much that she's changed the actual words, though she has. Well, she is the editor. No, it just sounds different. I mean, more abusive, more strident, if you like, than I intended. I mean, look at the headline. Children abandoned, says social work. Yeah, but isn't that what you were trying to say? Well, yeah, but in cold print. And I didn't say abandoned, I said let down. I don't know. She's beefed up the language, especially the verbs. Well, I'm... I'm not sure what you're talking about. Is it going to get you in some sort of trouble? I wouldn't be at all surprised. 
I'm not kidding. They wanted qualifications for a car wash attendant, I ask you. O-levels in button pushing. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Yeah, but that's the trouble, isn't it, Susie? People going from job to job, but not doing one job properly. And then they moan because no one will employ them. But some jobs are not worth doing, are they? No way. Silly man that said that. Or woman. Well, I do. This recession is not turning me into a robot. Katie, you haven't got a position yet, Susie? No, Mrs Walker. Well, I was talking to Margaret Charles this morning on the phone. She has the Lord Nelson B Street, she and her husband Rodney. And she was saying that she is looking for an experienced bar person. Oh, really? Thank you very much, Mrs Walker. I'll pop in. <laughs> do. And mention my name, will you? What it's worth. <laughs> You see, Michael, keep your self-respect and something will always turn up. Is that what you call it? Michael, you've got a dirty look in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> Bert, dear, don't you think that those beads you're wearing might be an industrial hazard? I'm sorry, Mrs Walker. Well, if you should inadvertently let them dangle in someone's pint, he wouldn't be at all pleased, would he? No, Mrs Walker. Yes? Two bottles of lager, please. So are you two? Not a thing, oh, really. Oh, Elsa now. Hey, uh, there were two pigeons on our backyard wall this morning, Elsa. Oh? There must have been ever so much in love. Oh, what's that? You know how billing and cooing there were doing. Oh, so that's it. Who told you? My lips are sealed. Alf, it must have been. Hey, you must be desperate, though, kid, going to a place like that. Ah, oh, you could have had one of my cast-offs if you didn't mind. Yeah, she want to charge you more. No, very reasonable. Just you wait. <laughs> Just wait till I come through that door with a good-looking big speck on my arm. <laughs> Just wait, Duckworth. <laughs> Why do you think I've been dashing around like a lunatic all morning? Where's my dinner? I told you to get something in the Rovers. I never heard you. Oh. Anyway, I was skint. Oh, look, I've only got a five-pound note. Well, I can bring you a change. Ooh, where have I heard that before? Here. And I want four quid back. I'm not paying for your ale as well. Four quid back. Mm. Oh, hey, I do hope our Archie's better. He'll be all right. I tell him to get some liquid inside him. A uh, liquid sort of clears you out, you know. It, uh, it, it flushes the germs out. Well, you ought to be permanently sterilised by now, then. Oh, and when he's on his feet again, tell him uh, we'll have a night out together. Which will put him straight back in bed again. Go on, get off to the rovers where you belong. And remember, uh, four quid you owe me. Don't you trust me through that? No, I don't. <laughs> Do come and sit down, Miss Lynch. Oh, thank you. Or are you very modern and prefer Miz? No, not really. Now, where did you hear about us? Mm. Oh. I like to know. Tells us if our promotional consultants are doing their job or not. Well, it was from somebody you fixed up, Beryl Agnew. Oh, Beryl. Yes, yeah, she was more than satisfied with her partner. Yeah, I think she's had him put on a gold chain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and were you wanting the full package, including visual presentation? Well, so long as I don't have to take my clothes off. <laughs> I think you'll look very well on Phil. But, yeah, I do as a rule. <coughs> You've been in films? Oh, no, no, I'm, I mean, I take a good photo. Oh, well. Video is rather different than holiday snaps. Do you do it in here? Oh, I mean, uh, do you take the films in here, I mean? No, oh, no. No, we have a location. Oh, where? No, it's in the garden, actually. Oh, but it can be lovely out there. I like the rustic arch myself. Fancy. There is something I do in here, though, in this room. I look into the future. What future? Your future. Oh, do you mean you're a fortune teller? A clairvoyant. It would be extra to the other fee, of course, but I am very reasonable. Mm. <laughs> no, thanks. <coughs> you see, if my future's out like my past, it's best kept dark. Oh, well, suit yourself. Mm. Um, had you any particular type in mind for your partner? Just a fella. Don't you have an ideal man? Well, is there such a thing? Ah, of course there is. A millionaire with a very generous nature. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've got one of those. No, else you'd have collared him yourself, fellow. I'm married. Um, what, what have you got, then? Oh, I'll show you one or two of our clients. Oh, you've got more than one, then? 
Certainly we have. Uh, no. You see, uh, it's just uh, some, somebody said. They said you'd just have the one fella to show me and he'd be a geriatric with false teeth that didn't fit. <laughs> yeah, so well, I'll put you a tape in. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, do you mind if I smoke? They do, I'm afraid. My friends. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there we are. One jar of bramble jelly. Tom. Anything else? No, nope, that's it. Do you know, I'm impressed. You what? Well, most of the women who come in here and buy a lot, they have a list. I have a list myself. But you don't have a list, and you're a fella. Ah, oh, well, you see, men are more superior than women, aren't they? I mean, we can even park cars properly. How many women do you know can do that? Hey, watch it, or else I'll muck your order up and you'll be in trouble with Ivy. Oh, I by giving me ordinary marmalade instead of chunky meat. Or even ordinary bread instead of sliced. Do you know what? You don't half wield a lot of power, you do. Oh, I know, and it frightens me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Sorry, uh, I just popped in to say I won't be late home after all. Who are you? Do you know this fella? I've never seen him before in my life, love. Look, I'll tell you what, if he's bothering you, I'll go and call a cop. Yeah, and I always thought this was a grocer's shop, not a palace of varieties. <laughs> see you then. Have you got a minute? Well, not I really. I see you having a go. Know. Everybody now, not just me. Pardon? This article in the record, I've just read it. You don't mince your words, dear. You put the blame right where it belongs for what the mess we're in on everybody but yourself. Ken wasn't having a go at you, Al. Well, that's how it reads to me. Well, then I suggest you read it again. I was trying to put the record straight on a subject that happens to be very close to me, youngsters. It's criminal the way we've let them down. Everybody's been looking at the number one, building the consumer society, which has suddenly blown up in our faces, leaving us with our dirty video films and the kids with nothing, except the prospects of Armageddon. Now, do you think that's something to be proud of? Because I don't. Bye, love. Bye. And they say shopping's boring, I don't know. As for hobbies, I'm very interested in gardening, and other outdoor activities, such as rambling. And, and I don't drink. Except for uh, the occasional glass of wine with meals. I think that's all, really. Thank you. Such a nice man, don't you think? His wristwatch was gold. Did you notice that? And the strap. Yes. <laughs> I don't think he's for me, though. Um, you see... Anybody who just has a glass of wine with his meal. It says a lot about somebody, does that? Well, I should say it said he was no sober and industrious. Yes, but you see, it's not a breed I'm very familiar with. Well, let's hope this next gentleman is more your type. Actually, I rather think he will be. Uh -huh. Hi. My name's Vincent Clare. I'm in the business, show business, that is. I sing, I tell a few gags. Maybe you've even heard of me. I'm pretty well known in Clubland. Are you all right, Miss Lynch? I, I have my own business. I'm in gents outfitting. Maybe you could tell by my clothes. I know now what you're asking yourself. Why is a guy like me, with all I have going for me, using a dating agency? He's not what he seems, good you know. Question. A very good question. I'll answer it honestly. I'm shy with women. Shy in their company, I mean. I blush when I meet one. I really do. But I have so much to offer. It would be a shame to waste all this. Can you help me? Ciao, Vince. Such a fascinating personality, don't you think? Almost as though he's two different men. I suppose you could say that. Yes. Hiya. Hi. Hi. Is my tea ready? Don't ask me. What? Well, it's not good asking him. He's not going grunt at you. Do you know, I reckon he'd been on that telephone half a dozen times since he came in. Doesn't seem to speak to anybody, though. Last. What's the problem? Well, I'm trying to get hold of Pam Mitchell, aren't I? She seems to have disappeared in the thin air. That article you wrote in here. Yeah, I'm well aware of that, Uncle Albert, and it's not my article. Well, at least some of it isn't. Well, it's got your name on it. Well, yes. Well, it must be your article if it's got your name on it. Ah, yes, but... Well, folks will think it's yours. Exactly. Lamb chops and mashed potatoes for Oh, that. great. 
Listen, she'll not have left the country, you know. You can get in touch with her tomorrow. Yeah, don't worry, I will. I've got one or two things I want to say to that lady. Well, you haven't got very good words about many people in here, either. Well, that's how it sounds, Uncle Albert, but that's not the way Ken wrote it. Well, why is your name on it? Just leave it, eh, Uncle Albert, just leave it. By Kenneth Barlow. That's his name, isn't it? Yes, Uncle Albert. So, will you tell Mrs. Walker I'm very grateful to her? Yeah, well, look, when do you start? Tomorrow. Look. I say, I'll pop in the Nelson on my light off. You know, make sure you're not making too many mistakes, love. All right, Fred, that'll be uh, very nice. Start up. Hey, where do you think you've been? Well, I'm on late tonight, aren't I? I'm not talking about that, love. I expected you to come in and tell us how you got on this afternoon. All in good time, Betty. Oh, very good. Let they do it then. Have they stopped making horror films? Nice one, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> She's been to a dating agency, you know, trying to get a fella. Oh, not that Bill and Cool place that's been advertised. Don't tell me you've been there, Mavis. No, of course I haven't. Now, are you sure? Look, if you must know, I have a gentleman friend at the moment. <laughs> so get back to your baby. Oh, come out the road. Dating come agency, on. I can't understand it. Oh, I'm always God. fighting women off, mate. Oh, <laughs> I do. Hey, what happened? Well, nothing happened. I just signed up. They don't have fellas waiting in cages, you know. Did you see any of them, then? These fellas on film? Oh, yes. I bet they're a right load of dogs, like faces like camels. Oh, were they there? I wouldn't say that, love, no. Oh, so there were some nice ones, were there? I wouldn't say that, love, either. You're not saying much at all, are you? You're never going to believe this, Betty. <gasps> Put it... I'll tell you later. Good evening, ladies. Hello, How hello. nice to see you. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Vera. What are you having? I'm going to have a port wine, because I think it's going to be my lucky night at the bingo tonight. Oh, well, make it so, then. Right. Do you know I could just do we win that jackpot? Are we splitting anything we win? Yeah, go on, then. Oh, and Ellie forgot, kid. Uh, how did you go on this afternoon? Oh, all right. Did you get fixed up, then? What sort of fellas are they? You know, that go to them places. Oh, all sorts, actually, Vera. Yeah, but they're all after one thing, though, aren't they? Oh, and what would that be? Well, they'll say it's friendship, but really the sex starved. Oh, do you reckon they Oh, are? definitely. They're animals. They are. Vera, what were you going to tell me before they walked in? Guess whose mug came up on the silver screen this hour? Who? <coughs> Only Jack <Jane> Douglas. <gasps> Uh, give you any photographs, did they? No, Vera, love, they didn't. But I've got a very good mental picture of one or two. <laughs> How long have you been back? Just now. Uh, you changed on the table from the fiver, you know. Oh, aye. I'm sorry there's only three quid, but uh, I had to get my tea. So I had fish and chips, you know. Uh, could you lend us a, a quid till tomorrow? Yeah, take what you like. Oh, fair. Not wrong, is it? All right, she's dead. No. Died this afternoon. Just went in his sleep, closed his eyes, and the doctor said his heart just give up. Oh, I am sorry. You were only 61. Well, I said he was that. There's only me left in our family now. Archie, only 61. Be a bit to do, wouldn't it? Funeral and all that. Yeah, I've let the undertaker know. If I can help. Thanks, Chuck. Ta very much. There will be a bit to do, too, won't there? Then be in business. Mm -hmm. Do you know if he left a will? Oh, I don't know. It's the last thing I've been thinking of. Oh, of course, I know that. <laughs> Archie, come. <laughs> Have a good cry, love. They'll do you good. <laughs> oh. Where's my breakfast? Eh? My breakfast. Oh, you'll have to do yourself a couple of rounds of toast. You mean the dinner's note? No, I haven't. For once in your life, you're going to have to do something for yourself, aren't you? I've been up half the night and my head's pounding away like a steam hammer. I'd need to get up. No, well, you wouldn't have noticed if the house had fell in on you, whistling away like a factory hooter, you were. You're not poorly, are you? Oh, no. No, not like that. It's our Archie. I just couldn't get him out of my mind. I mean, there he is one minute and next minute. Don't let it get you down, love. You can't bring him back, you know. No, I know it can't, Chuck, but I can't help it. 
It was always a bit special to me with Archie. Now he's gone. They all have. Do you realise I'm the last one? Last of the crab trees. When I'm gone, that's it. Ooh, it makes you think, doesn't it? It does make you think, yeah. You might be quid, then, you know. Hard to be with the boy, too, wouldn't he? Well, I might have expected that from you. He's hardly cold, and all you can think about is what's in it for you. Well, it's only been practical. If you want to do something practical, just make sure this table's set and there's a couple of pies in the oven when I get back. You can't help thinking, though, can you? All I'm thinking about is giving him a good send-off. Now, until that's over and done with, I'm thinking about now, else. See you later. Morning, slave. Morning, love. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think you're going to up like a dog's dinner? Well, you can't go looking like a bag of chips if you're going on the telly, can you? You what? Hi. My name is Elizabeth Theresa Lynch, spinster of this parish. My age is my business. I've got a great sense of humour, as you can tell from some of the guys I've been out with. What do you think? Right, I've cracked it. <laughs> oh, I knew what you were on about. I might be able to tell. This video lark. You're never going in for that. But why not? Stranger things have happened at sea. You'd never know who I might fetch up with. Like Vincent Clare. <laughs> Vincent Flaming <laughs> Clare? Are you sure it was Jack Duckworth? I mean, not somebody that just looked like him. There's only one Jack Duckworth, Chuck, believe me. Cool, he's got a nerve, hasn't he? I mean, what's he up to? Well, he fancies his chances, does our Vince, doesn't he? Hmm. Some chances, eh? I mean, what girl with all the marbles would be interested in him, lovey? <laughs> oh, I don't know, Betty. I can think of one who'd be interested. Huh? Very interested. What a morning. Thing like Weatherfield Fire Station in there, and the phone never stopped. Well, at least I've got you all in at the same time, yeah, anyway. Yeah. There you go. Oh, where did this go? Second post. Ooh. From the recorder. Oh, apologising for stirring up a hornet's nest, I hope. No, it's a cheque for my article. Oh, ten pounds. Very nice, too. By the time you've bought everybody you've upset a drink, you'll have enough left over for a second-class stamp. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what we're going to do with this. We're going to have a wild night out. Well, all of us. Well, why not, yeah. You'd like to come out with us for dinner, wouldn't you, Tracy? Yes. Don't ask me, will you? Well, I thought you didn't like restaurants. I don't, but it's nice to be asked. Would you like to come out with us for a meal, Uncle Albert? No. But if you've got brass to chuck about, I wouldn't say no to a drop of rum. You're on. Good. I'll get it. Hey, I thought you were getting dinner. Right? That's all right, love. I'll get it. <clears throat> Hello, Ken Barlow. Ah, at last, at last. Yes, I did want to talk to you, and yes, it was about the article. Please, you must be joking. Huh? Of course I'm serious. Uh, look, um, I don't want to talk about it on the phone. Will you be in your office this afternoon? Oh, well, that's even better. Right. OK, I'll see you on the rovers, then. Yep. Right. Bye. Is that you? What are you expecting? Oh. Ah, oh, Chuck, you've remembered. What? The table, you've set it. Oh, aye. Uh... Did you get the pies? Ah, uh, they're in the oven. Uh, it'll be. Yes, Chuck, what? I've been thinking, you know. What about th this uh, this chip shop? Do you think there's a, perhaps a, a jinx on it? Well, I mean, your Norman had it, it had snuffed it and left it to Archie. Now he's kicked the bucket. And... Look, just stop thinking about it, can't you? Well, you're the only living relative, aren't you? I won't hear another word about it until after the funeral. It's not right and proper, not while he's still here. Now, not another word. Do you understand? It's usually so. I do. Pies in the oven, you said? Right. Well, for your information, you have to turn it on if you want them to warm up. Oh, I must have forgot. Oh, now, who's that? How the hell do I know? No, well, we're not likely to find out if we wait for you to shift yourself, are we? Oh, it's you, Mrs. Abton. you better come in. We've uh, got a visitor, Stan. Mrs. Carter. Who? A friend of Mr. Crabtree's, oh. Archie. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Ogden. Mm. I take it it is Mr. Ogden. 
Yes, it is. Oh, no offence meant, I'm sure. Only you can't be too careful these days, can you? What's brought you round here, then? Oh, I had to, hadn't I? I mean, we are sharing a common grief, aren't we? Archie's a great loss to both of us. Well, yeah, I'm sure you must miss him. I mean, I, I know you worked for him, but... Well, you're not exactly family, are you? But Archie wasn't just my employer, Mrs Ogden. Oh, no. We were much closer than that. A good friend was Archie. A very good friend. Are you having another? No, Tar, you're all right. I'm only just waiting for our Ivy. Oh, of course, suit yourself. How's your Brian going on? Is he uh, looking after you, then? Well, you can call it that. I mind you, what mischief can I get up to like this? I can think of a few things, I reckon. <laughs> but here. Oh. Hello, love. We were wondering where you got to. Don't blame me. You can blame this lot. You'd think they'd all be too pleased to get out at place, wouldn't you? Whatever gives you that idea. Would you two mind shifting over? Let me get to that bar so we can order a drink. Three gin and tonics, please, love. Listen, it were my shout. Look, I'm only ordering, and nobody said not about paying. Oh, no. Yes, love. Yes, Mr. Keep Len. You haven't seen him, have you? Len, no, sorry, I haven't seen him. Oh. He's over at Disco, love. I just saw him going in. He won't be long. Oh, I say, you're right. No, 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 not really. It's just that, well, I've got a message for him from Rita. She's to meet him in here for lunch now, she can't. Oh, no, no problem. I'll tell him when I see him. Up. It won't be five minutes, though. Do you want a drink? No, 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 thank you. Not for me. But, I mean, if you could give him that message, because, you see, I'm just on my way to Emily's. I'm going to have my lunch with her. So, if you'll stop me. No problem. All right. But, you see, I said I'd be there at quarter two. Well, I don't like to be late when she's gone to all that trouble. Yeah, well, you will be if you stop here gassing with me, won't you? <laughs> yes, yes, I will. Are, are you sure now it's no trouble? Of course it is. Look, get your gun and enjoy your lunch. All right, thank you. Bye. No trouble. Video date? Yes. What did you say? Sell sports runs in back room and Never. all. Never. She does. My goodness, you're losing your touch, aren't you? I thought you only had to crook your little fingers to get killing the rush from the fellas. Don't knock it, Elsie. You should have seen the unk of manhood my mate brought in here. Wasn't some of the cat dragged in, I can tell all you. Right. Then I suppose you've got him chained up now down in the cellar, manacles, so as we can't get our hands on him. <laughs> you're joking, Elsie. The lot they showed me, they must have dragged up from bargain basement, especially for sale. I couldn't believe it. I laughed that much, I nearly split me tights, which is why I'm doing you lots of favour, isn't it? What favour? Well, let's face it, Vera. If anybody needs cheering up, it's you lot, isn't it? Mm. Hey, she's not wrong, you know. How about it, Kate? Yes. Do you mind? I've got my husband here. It seems a very expensive way of having a laugh to me. Now, that's where you're wrong, Elsie, because you happen to know the right people. They are. Half price for personal recommendations. Oh, no, 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 dear me, no. I could buy a bottle of gin for what I'd pay to get in here. <laughs> what is the matter with this lot, Vera? It looks like there's only me and you know how to enjoy a good laugh, love. Oh, I don't know, OK. You're never thinking of going? Who oh, says I'm not going? I do. You're a married woman, Vera. Listen, if I want to go, love, I'll go. Mention my name, they'll treat you like royalty. Vera. Mm. Ta, love. I'll go this after. This after what? You're working this after? I'll go in my shopping hour. Oh. Hey, listen, I hope you're not having me on, you know. If I don't come out of this, bit of my course is laughing. I'll have you as a tour <laughs> Oh, you will, Chuck. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not uh, serving the tippy today. Shop shut today. Mark of respect for poor Archie. I say mark of respect for Archie's customers. He never could cook fish, you know. Something wrong with the batter. Here, yeah, that's enough of that. You, uh, you never did get round to saying what you'd come for. Well, for one thing, I wanted you to know that you weren't alone in your grief. Mm. And for another? There are arrangements to be made. I mean, we do want to give him a good send-off, don't mm -hmm. we? Oh, well, you've no need to worry about that. It's all fixed up, all taken care of. You might have said something to me. Well, I'm telling you now, aren't I? He's being brought back here tonight. So if you want to see him before he goes, he'll be here till Monday. That's the funeral. Well, thanks very much. That's great, that is. Looks as if I've been wasting my time. You seem to have everything under control. Hey, hang on a minute. Why shouldn't she be in it if she wants to? I've told you, Stanley, it's all fixed up. Hi, but funerals cost money. I know they do. That's why he took out an insurance policy, isn't it? He always said that if anything happened to him, there'd be enough to put him away. Aye. Uh... There was, three years ago, when he took it out. Pity he didn't think about inflation, isn't it? Still, 
I'll expect you'll have thought about that, won't you? I mean, you seem to have thought about everything else. Hello, darling. You're looking for someone? Yes, I am, actually, but it doesn't look as if he's here yet. Oh, well, looks like you're stuck with me till you arrive, doesn't it? Tell me, how's the uh, Weatherfield recorder coming on? Oh, can't complain. How's the disco coming along? It's coming along. Oh, don't forget to give me your opening date. We've got quite a feature planned. Darling, you will be the first to know. Let me get you a drink. Oh, if you insist, I'll have uh, half lager. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> so, tonight's the night, then, eh? I take it you're about my new job. But what else? Look, I hope you're going to be happy at the house. So do I. It's going to be a habit with me, isn't it? Getting a job and losing it again. It's a nice little boozer, the Nelson. It'd be like home from home. Grotty little cave like that, no danger. Give over, Lynch. They've just done it up, haven't they? Well, the pub has I. It's a pity they didn't renovate the bar staff while they were at it. Still, like Freddie says, you'll soon feel at home there, look. One of these days, she's going to open that fat gob of hers once too often. Oh, techno noddies of hers, those. She's jealous, isn't she? If she could, she'd be up and out of here like a shop, but she can't, can she? She's got no, no breeding, no background, doesn't she? She hasn't been a cocktail barmaid in London, no. Anybody with any butler be up and out of a place like this, more oh, like the wind. Like you, you mean? Well, I'm, I'm different, so, mate, you know. Oh, sorry I'm late. I went home for lunch. I tried to escape from the telephone, but they still managed to catch up. Well, that's all right. I haven't been here long myself. Right, shall we sit down? Right. Excuse me, won't you? Feel free. Uh, you haven't got a drink? No, I'm all right for now. So, I gather you were disappointed with your article. Disappointed? You said you were working on it, didn't you? Not rewriting it beyond recognition. Oh, come on. All I did was make a bit more of some of the points you a raised. A bit more? Some very valid points. Yes, well, I still think you went too far. Look. Did I say anything you hadn't said yourself? Well, did I? Well, no, 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 I suppose not. But it was the way you changed the emphasis, wasn't it? But you it? must admit it made people sit up and take notice. Isn't that what you wanted? Well, yes, yes, I, I suppose. I thought you'd be so. delighted. I mean, when you left a message saying you wanted to see me, I thought you were so fired with enthusiasm you couldn't wait to get on with your next piece. <laughs> what makes you so sure there'll be a next piece? Because if you weren't prepared to stick your neck out now and again, you wouldn't have written for me in the first place. And you certainly wouldn't have led that disco protest. I think you've got quite a lot to say for yourself. Yes, Arlo. I think I'll have that drink now. Do make yourself comfortable. Mrs. Um, uh, Monroe. Oh, yes, Mrs. Monroe. You came on personal recommendation, you said. Yeah, that's right. A friend of mine came, didn't she? A Miss Lynch. Oh, yes, Miss Lynch. She seemed very impressed. Oh, she was. <laughs> but, but listen, I haven't got a lot of time. Oh, no. No, of course. Oh. Now, tell me something about yourself. Uh, divorced, I take it. I should be so lucky. Pardon? No, I'm just saying I was lucky, you know, to get shut of him like I did. Oh, he led me a dog's life. I don't know how I stuck it so long. And now you're ready to take the plunge again. Well, let's put it this way, kid. Uh, I won't mind a bit of male companionship, you know, as so long as it's right tie. And what do you call the right tie? Well, I'm not fussy, really. So long as it's got a few bob in his back pocket, you know, big flash car, house in country. Oh, and looks a bit like Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll certainly do our best. Now, let's get some details down, shall we? Mrs. Monroe, uh, Christian name? Carol. Carol Monroe. Carol Monroe. Oh, is that your car? Yes. I'm sorry if I went in with both feet, but uh, you do take my point. I still think you're wrong. So, what about next time? Oh. I don't think I could stand the next time. I haven't got many friends left as it is. Look, I won't say I won't change anything else you write. If I think it needs it, I will. But if I let you see it before it goes in the paper? I still think I'd like the dust to settle on this one first. Well, think about it. I'll call you next week. You don't give up easily, do you? How about lunch one day? You seem to be tied up most of the day, and I certainly am. All right, why not? I look forward to that. I'll be in touch. See you next week, then. Bye. I am a bachelor, and I have never been married before. Well, it won't have been what if he's a bachelor. <laughs> I have a steady job with a good pension prospects, three weeks paid holiday a year, 
in a furniture warehouse. Sounds a great place to spend your holidays to start. In the summer, there's nothing I like better than to go on long bicycle rides in the countryside. Oh, what did no, it is bombed on your boat. <laughs> I take it you're not interested in seeing any more of Mr. Cosgrove. Sorry, love. Uh, I mean, when I said I won't fuss, eh? I mean, I was hoping there'd be odd one, you know, that was still alive. Anyway, listen, I'll have to be getting back. Oh, look, look, if it's someone with a less conventional lifestyle you're after, I think this next one may interest you. Oh, well, go on then, but be sharp about it, kid. Cos if I don't get back, it won't be a fella I'm after, it'll be a job. Oh, this gentleman is in the entertainment business. <gasps> now you're talking, kid. Hey, is anybody we know? Well, I haven't heard of him myself, I must admit, but perhaps you have. My name's Vince Sinclair. Yeah, flaming well have. I'm in the business. Show business, that is. I sing, I tell a few gags. Maybe you've heard of me. I'm pretty well known in uh, show circles. And that's not the only place either. That is not my true profession. I have my own business. I'm in gents outfitting. Gents outfitting? Maybe you could tell by my clothes. I know what you're asking yourself. Why should a guy like me, with all I have going for me, use a dating agency? I can't wait. It is a good question, a very good question. And I'll answer it honestly. I'm shy with women. I'm shy in their company. I blush when I meet one, I really do. But I have so much to offer. It would be a shame to let all this go to waste. Can you help me? Ciao. Vince. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I wake up in a minute and find it's all been a dream. I thought you'd be more your type. As a matter of fact, your friend Miss Lynch was rather interested in Mr. Sinclair. I do hope you're not going to fight over him. Just off then, Suze. Yes, that's right. Hey, them lads in the Nelson won't believe the look when you turn up. Mrs. Walker lost a chance in a million, you know, as she let you go. Eh? Where the heck's that going? Oh, it'll be going out to Oggies, won't it? Oggies? Hmm. Hilda's brother just snuffed it. They set it off the funeral from there. Oh, I see. Oh, you have me worried for a minute. Well, it just goes to show, doesn't it? What does? Well, you're here one minute and gone the next. Trouble is, you don't know the minute, do you? No, you've got to make the most of your opportunities, so while you can, you know. Like, uh, you and me, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah? You're dead right, you know, Fred. Eh? About being here one minute and gone the next. I and mean, if I don't get gone in a minute, I'll lose my job before I've even got it. See you. Mrs. Ogden? Oh, yes. Uh, hello. I take it it's convenient. You did say any time after five. Oh, yes, yes, of course it is. Stan, it's Archie. Right. We'll bring him in, then. Oh, yeah. The front room, is it? Yes, that's right. It's all ready for him. I've given it a good bottom in. Do we have to have him in here? Yeah? Yes, we do. And while he's under our roof, just you show a bit of respect. Now come out the road and let him through. Hey. What? Do you know something? What? That's the first time your aunt has been through that door in ten years. Get in. Right. Well, how did you get on? We. Really? Oh, it's Pam Mitchell. Oh, all right, I suppose. Oh, by that, I take it you didn't tear her into strips and feed her to the pigeons? No, no, I didn't. I mean, well, why don't you explain why she changed the article? It seemed to make quite a lot of sense. You've changed your tune, haven't you? Yeah, well, like she said, she didn't say anything and I didn't. She just pointed it up a bit and... Well, it seemed to have made people sit up and think, which was the object of the exercise, wasn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. You, uh, you gonna write any more? Thinking about it. I'm seeing her next week. Uh, she suggested lunch, actually. Just as long as she's not using you. Using me? Yeah, to, to fight her battles for her. And just remember, it's your head that's on the block if anything goes wrong. Oh, don't worry. I think I've got the measure of Miss Mitchell. 
Hey, hello. Thank you. It is quiet in here tonight, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. Stop like this for closing time oh, for me. Oh, <laughs> right, where is she, the little cat? Oh, look, calm down, Vera. Yeah, come on, Vera, not What? I thought where she's been a oh, fool of me. Oh, what are you saying, Chucky? Yes, right, I'll have Bet's head on a plate for starters. Oh, Bet, you can have it. You do your own mucky work. Oh, I will, love. Don't you fret. Bet, friend of yours wants to see you, Chuck. Vera. Don't go getting yourself into no bother, will no, you? No, if you want to cause trouble, go and cause it with Jack, not with Ben. Oh, Lynch. don't you worry. He tends to come. When I finish with him, he'll think he's been through a concrete mixer. Somebody mm. requesting the pleasure of my company? Oh, laugh. Go on, you'll laugh on the other side of your face oh, when I finish with you. Well, if you want to cause bother, go home and do it. Jack. I will Can't not. You? Not till I've had it out with her. I take it you've been, then? Oh, yes, I've been, love. You set me up good and proper, didn't you? Set you up, Vera? Yeah. Good giggle, Warwick. Doing a mate a favour. Sooner have let him get away with it, would you? Sooner have let him carry on with his little game? Oh, don't worry. When I finish with him, he'll wish he'd never been born. Vera, you've been knocking seven bells out of your jack every week since the year docked. Where has it got you, love? Oh, listen, what goes on between me and my husband is my business. I'm not saying it isn't. All I'm saying is there's more than one way to skin a cat. And if any fella had tried to pull a trick like that behind my back, he would have had to pay for it with flaming interest. Right, Elsie? Right, kid. Oh. What are you going on about? Playing him at his own game. If Vincent Clare wants to meet the girl of his dreams, let him. Hey, now, you hang on a minute, yo. Oh, I think I'm with you, kid. Well, I wish I was. What name did you give, Vera? Carol Monroe. See? I think they'd make a lovely couple. I mean, he's got so much to offer. Are you with me now, Vera? Oh, I'm with you, kid. <laughs> I'm streets ahead of you. Just drop the bags there, and then we'll have a quick cup of tea, and then get off again, eh? Yeah, well, I just want to call next door and unpack first. Yeah, all right. Hello, here we are again. Hello, Mr. Ogden. All right. Great. Here, yeah, there for you, Stanley. Do you know, I don't know why more people don't go to Betty for their holidays. Knocks Blackpool into a cock's hat. <laughs> hey, you're looking smart, aren't you? It'll have been spring cleaning. Hey, and do you know your front curtains are still drawn? Do you want me to go and open them? Ah, uh, it's for Archie. What, Hilda's brother, Archie? I've been there since yesterday. Ain't it marvellous? You're away for a couple of days and anything can happen. What, he's in the front, is he? Ah. Uh, is he the one with the chippy? Yeah. Uh, well, he were. Oh, why did he? So look, I retire or what? What? Is that Archie? Yeah. Eddie, what's up? He's dead. What? Well, I suppose he's dead. There's a coffin in there. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, I'm just about to stick my head round the corner and shout frying tonight, and there's this coffin. I mean, you could have warned us. Didn't give me much chance, did you? But where did he die, Mr. Ogden? Oh, about two days after you went to Barry. I tried to get in touch, but he's got no number. We're not on the phone at home. Well, he's Hilda now, then. Yeah, I wish Remy now she'd taken it. Not too bad. She's out shopping for this afternoon. Why was this afternoon? Funeral. You don't think you're stopping there permanent, do you? Well, thank goodness we came back. At least I can give her a hand. And you can go to the funeral, Eddie. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know whether I ought, you know. There's not many. I think you should, love. You know she looks on you as family. Yeah, OK. Right, that's uh, £11.80, please, Hilda. Oh, uh, well, look, I, I think I can do without the fancy biscuits. Oh, uh, OK. And I'll tell you what, we've got some nice tins of port shoulder that'll go instead of these tins of ham. Yeah, go on, then. Right. Hello, love. I've done your bar, Kate. Oh, there's no rush, love. Hello, Hilda. Morning. Right, that's, um, ten thirty-eight. Is that better? Oh, yes, ta. Thanks, love. Not worse than being overfaced, is there? Craig, yeah, I wish I were coming to your house for tea. Uh, Ivy. What, love? Hilda's burying her brother today. Oh. Oh, you're not, are you, Hilda? Yeah. Our Archie. Oh, so I had no idea. You weren't to know, love. Well, I'm sorry, just saying. Ta. Thank you, Deirdre. I hope everything goes all right, Elder. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it will. Ta. -da. Ta, -da, love. I didn't even know she had a brother. I think I'll go shopping this afternoon. 
What for? Don't know. Till I see it. Till I see the price of it. Hi. Hello. Right. Whose was the bacon? That was for me, thank you. Yeah. Oh. Carlo, how much is that? 45p each. I'm sorry I'm a bit later than I said, but we got busy all of a sudden. Oh, we'd have come across for them. Wouldn't you, Mavis? Uh, yes, I would. 45, thank you. Well. Oh, hello, Rita. Hello, Mavis. Oh, hello. Hello, Gail. Oh, hello, Gail. Hello. Well, and uh, how are you, then? Long time no see. Oh, it hasn't been that long. Oh, it just seems that long. Well, I just thought I'd come around being dinner time and uh, see how you were. Well, being dinner time, she's hungry. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Oh, smashing, smashing. Never better. <laughs> well, I can't take all these high spirits. Why don't you take Victor upstairs and make him a cup of tea? Oh, yes, um, if you'd like to. Come. Oh, I'd love to. Oh, she might even offer you a bite of her butter. Uh, yes, I, I could. I could easily. Uh, no, maybe, sir. I mean, you know my rule. Either breakfast or lunch, never both. And this morning, I had a particularly substantial breakfast. <laughs> but you're glad he came in now, aren't you? Well, if you like to come up, you'll have to excuse the nest, but I wasn't expecting anybody. Excuse me. 45. Thank you. It's like that all the time, you know. That stir carpet's threadbare. All fellas running up and down it. <laughs> no, I still had a blister on my feet right mm. up to this last week, but I think that was as much from working in the shop as anything, you know, being on my feet all day. <sighs> It's a marvellous holiday, though, Mavis. Oh, yes. We must try Scotland next. Striding out over the heather, eh? Oh, I should hope it'd be easier on the feet. But that's not why I called. Um, I want to see you, Mavis. Uh, oh? About uh, something specific. That. Uh, are you troubled with cockroaches or other No, 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 no. Other the side, other the side. Oh, a house. Well, uh, a cottage, yes. With a little craft shop at the back. Um, and it's for sale. And what's more, Mavis, I'm seriously thinking of buying it. Oh. It's out near Saddleworth. Do you know Saddleworth at all, Mavis? No, not... Pennine country. There's a certain rugged atmosphere out there. You can almost feel the rock under the sod. Oh, well, that sounds very nice. And, and that's where you'd like to live, is it? Well, I've always considered it a possibility. But what I'd really like, Mavis, is for you to come and have a look at that cottage with me. Me? Well... I've always thought we saw eye to eye, and uh, I trust your judgment. And as I'd like a second opinion, uh, who better to give it? Well, thank you very much. Well, we'll go straight away this afternoon. Oh. No? No, Rita's just said that she was going out, and, well, somebody has to look after the shop. Oh, dear. I've arranged it, said we'd be there. Oh, I'm very sorry, Rita, but I do have work to do. I mean, I can't just go disappearing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm selfish, aren't I? Thoughtless, that's what I am. No. No, you're not. Of course you're not. Well, did you manage to keep your hands off him then? Only just, Ken. Give us a bottle of lager. Do you know, for two pins I'd have scragged him. But I thought, no, keep you cool, kid. Your chance will come. Oh, it will. <laughs> so listen, have I got it right then? Go on. I ring agency. Yes. Yeah. And I say, I've decided I want to meet Vince St. Clair. Vince St. Clair. Sounds a right pansy. I mean, you've only got to look at him to see as a Jack Duckworth. Yeah, well, just don't you forget to use your false name as well. All right. Callum Monroe. Good in tech. Terrific. 28, look. Only thing is, the ones are in the back walk that, I mean, how will they be able to do that? Well, you can ring them now, from here. Well, will that be all right? Of course it will. Come on round. Listen, tell them to leave a message, cos I can always tech it. I'll ring for you. Do you know I'm not kidding? We're having a tea. We sat there, brass faced as a monkey. I said, What are you all going to chuffed about? Oh, not that need bother you, love. I thought, No, but it'll bother you, mate, when you find out I've seen your big ugly mug on that video. You'll get the shock of your rotten life. Carol. Oh, hello. Um, this is Miss Carol Monroe speaking. I've just been thinking about those gentlemen that you showed me. And there is one that I'd quite like to meet. Well, tomorrow night, if you can fix it. Is it fine, Betty? OK, I love it. You haven't got a black tie you could lend us, have you? I'm not sure I've got a tie that might have blackened. Well, I can't think who might have. I mean, Mrs Walker isn't here. She might find you an old under there, Jack. That's 56, love. Is she not going to have another? Go on, I'll have half. I might need it. And a half, please, Betty. I'll tell you who might have one. Have you thought of asking Alf Roberts? Hey, good thinking, Betty. Hey, do you know what? I bet it's the same black tie that goes us to all the funerals in Betty. <laughs> Mind you, I don't think he'd had his health ever since he took over that shop, you know. 
Fumes from the oil used to settle on his chest. Well, it can't be a healthy environment. No. Now, would you like a cup of tea, Mrs. Smith? That's not too strong, if you can manage it. Stanley? Yeah? No call to be reading that now, is there? Uh, no, I'm just uh, putting it away. I'll see that you do. Yeah. Good You'll have a cup, Mr. Ogden. Uh, yes, please, love. Oh, thank you. You uh, got your bus all right, then? Oh, it were a taxi I got. Not an occasion for buses, isn't this? Oh, uh, Eddie, this is Mrs. Carter. She was a friend of our actress. Oh, pleased to meet you. Likewise. Eddie's a friend of the family. I see. We're uh, just having a cup of tea, if you'd care to have one. Hello, hello. Hello. Now, uh, this is Marion, that's Eddie's fiancée, and this is Mrs. Swales, me and Archie's cousin. Hello. hello. Mrs. Carter helped him to run the shop. Well, I think there were more between me and Archie than just that, Mrs. Ogden, if you don't mind me saying so. You'll have a cup of tea? Oh, no, thank you. I don't think I could get out past my lips the way I feel this morning. Where's sugar? No, I've got it here. Oh, I wonder, Mrs. Ogden, if I might spend a moment or two alone with Archie before... Well, while there's still time. Oh, certainly you can. He's just through there in the front. Thank you. Well, they must have been close. I mean, judging by the state she's in. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't set too much store on that, Agnes. I mean, there's them what have their grief and hide it. And there's others what prefer to make the most they can out of what little they've got. Well, I'll uh, give you a ring then. Let you know if the property's all it's been cracked up oh, to me. Yes, I'd be very interested. Oh, aye. What property is this then? Oh, it's uh, in Saddleworth. Only I've been thinking of getting a property of my own for some time now. Oh. Well, if you don't fancy this, I think Chalky White is still trying to get shut of our old house. Oh, I don't think that's the sort of thing that Victor would be interested in at all. Oh, isn't it? Very nice. Oh. I was, uh, I was asking Mavis if she'd come with me, uh, give me a second opinion, but... Uh... I told you, Vic. I know, I know. Well, what have you told him? Well, it's the shop, isn't it? I mean, I can't just go... Of course over. you can. When are you going? Well, uh, now, actually. Right, off you go. Get your woolies on, Mavis. Saddle with a very drafty place. You said you were going out this afternoon. Well, I've changed my mind. I'll go tomorrow. Now, do you want to go, or don't you? Well, yes, if you're sure you don't mind. Cross me heart, hope to die. <laughs> I'm going to get my coat on. You do that, Mavis. She takes a little persuading into things, does our Mavis. Do you know? You could be right. remaining brother. Van Seel driving her brother. Mind a champ now, has she? Stop it! You're not going on your holidays. Aren't they all flatness? <laughs> Hello, well, here comes. Vince, Vince Sinclair. Hang on a minute, lovey, I'll get him for you. Hi, uh, Vince Sinclair speaking. She would, would she? She must have very good taste. I'll see if I can fit her in. Yeah. Uh, hey, um, am I not supposed to see her video before I make my mind up? She had it. Well, um, it, you, you know what I mean. Like, she, she's, she's okay, isn't she? Yeah, well, well, she must be very keen, and it would be a shame to let the little lady down. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's fine with me. I'm okay for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And and how will you arrange all this? You will ring me here. That that's that's good. Yeah, yeah. That is that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Ciao, ciao.
All done. Everything all right? Oh, yes, very nice. Thank you, love. It's not the same as a burial, though, is it? A cremation. I mean, it does have its advantages, but it doesn't have the same dignity somehow. Well, it were better than I expected. I think that's the way I shall go when my time comes. I do. Hey, we've got a fag, Eddie. Don't gasp. I, I've made the sandwiches like a stay, Mrs. Ogden, but I didn't know whether you wanted them in here or what. Oh, well, we'll bring them in as soon as folk are ready. I'm ready now. I've had no dinner. And just to think he's no longer with us. I still can't accept it. I can't. Yeah. Well, if seeing him cremated hasn't convinced you now, well, do you want to eat now? Will you wait a bit? Well, I think I owe it to myself to try some it. Lord knows what I've been living on these past three days. Yeah, me too. Right, they might as well bring it in then, love, and they can help themselves. Keep them gardens lovely, don't you? You know, all them flowers and that. A lot of work there, you know. Ah, oh, you could play bowls on them greens, couldn't you? You could, Stan. Now, it's a uh, running buffet, so don't wait to be asked. We won't. I wasn't talking to you. And does everybody want tea, then? Mm -hmm. Yes, please, love. Yes. You got something stronger? No beer in? There are alcoholic beverages, if anybody would care to partake. Sideboard, good. I'd still prefer tea, please. Yes, yeah, so would I. Go and put the kettle out. Do you know, all I can think about is the rows we had. All the unkind things I ever said to him. I just wish I could take them back. Now, then, Hilda, be fair. Think of all the help you gave him. All the help when he was poorly. You did. That's right, you've got nothing to reproach yourself about. Now, come on. Uh, oh, well, I dare say, but... Well, it's just all I can think about. Well, isn't that funny? All I can think about are the happy times we had together. I don't think we had a crossword. Not one. This won't get my shopping done. No, we're going to be back here before we've gone. Oh, excuse me. Well... I've just sat these cups, love. Well, Weatherfield Double Two Seven One. Who? Miss Carol Monroe. I'm sorry, I'm done afraid they don't know anyone of that name. Excuse me, Mrs. Walker. I think I know what that's about. Well, it's more than I do. <clears throat> Hello, uh, Miss Lynch here. Uh, Miss Monroe said it would be all right if I take a message if you rang. Hey. You're supposed to be delivering them, not reading them. Hop it. Uh, there we are, look. Do you know, quickest lad we ever had. Couldn't read a word. He were like grease lightning. He used to do the round in half the time at the kids. Len said we ought to make it a rule. We only take them on if they're illiterate. <laughs> no. Well, I think he were joking. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, oh, it was lovely out there. It was really. Hello, girl. Hello. And how is the house? A cottage. Sorry, cottage. Well, it is sort of a cottage, but I mean, it's, it's like part of a row. Oh, it's a cottage, maybe, there's no doubt about that. And the views are marvellous, majestic. You can see for miles from the front window. What about little things like, does it have a roof on? Oh, it's very sound. Yeah, well, it'll need a bit of modernising. Not at the expense of character, Mavis. Not at the expense of oh, character. Oh, no, not at the expense of character. No. I, I was going to offer Victor a cup of tea. If yeah, you... well, why don't you have dump papers? There's not much else to do. Well, would you like to come up with it? Lead on, Mavis. Is it Victor that's buying this house? Cottage. Or... This. Cottage, then. Well, you didn't think it was Mavis and Victor together, did you? Gail tells it. You wash your mouth out with soap and water when you get home. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me, really, truly, honestly, Mavis, what did you think? Because I'll tell you what I think. I think it's just what I want. I really do. Oh, I must mm. say it is the sort of place I'd imagined you living in. That little workroom at the back. You know what I'd use that for? Oh, I thought that was a scullery. I'd set up a potter's wheel. I've done the course. Do you know, that's something I've always thought I'd like to try, but I suppose it's more difficult than it looks, is it? Oh, well, there's a knack. I just could have the knack, that's all. I don't know whether I'd have that. I think I'll say yes. Do you think I should say yes? I mean, there are other people interested. I, I won't get a second chance. Well, th th there is just one drawback. Yes? Well, I mean, it's not a, really a drawback. I mean, it's not a, a reason for not buying it. it. Well, it's just me. I mean... It's not really important, but... Uh, what is it, Mavis? Well, it... It's just that it's so far out. I mean... I shall miss seeing you. Well, it wouldn't stop me seeing you, Mavis. 
Oh, no. I wouldn't be buying it if I thought that. There we are. How you do? Hey. Have you got some money? I've got my wallet on me. Oh, that's clever, isn't it? Well, I've seen some tricks. Well, I didn't think I'd be needing it. Come on, he says. I'll treat you to a drink. Darling, thank you, lovely. Sit down, shall we? Hello. Hello, Hello Mum. Uh, what would it glass of lager? Yes, please. Lad. Well, I never expected seeing you two in here. Well, I thought I was saving my bus fare by catching a lift. But I've just had to buy these. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Mrs. Walker had to be here. So she thinks it's me playing silly beggars with made up names. But what did they say at the agency? Well, they've rung Vince. Vince. And no problem. He says he's not doing out tomorrow night and he would like nothing better than to meet the lovely Carol. Do you know I'll kill him? I will, I'll swing for so him. I said that you drink tomorrow morning and arrange all the details. Oh, I'll do all that all right. Details about what? Murder. Uh, you don't want to know either, or if you don't. All right, I don't then. Is this mine? Yes. I'm just having a word we have nine again, all right? <laughs> so where do you think I should meet him, then? I mean, I could say our house, save us both getting dressed up. Hey, hey! It must be my lucky day. Oh, wow, how's that? Catching you with your purse out. I'll have a drink, chow, with him. Go on, then, Beck, give him a pint. A condemned man's last request? Yeah, something like that. What are you two up to? No, Vera was just saying how she fancied a night out. So we were wondering if you'd take her out tomorrow night. Tomorrow? Yeah, you're not doing out, are you? Oh, damn if you don't want to ask me soon. Why? What are you doing, Jack? Well, I'm working, aren't I? I'm, hey, I'm sorry, kid. Oh, there was a job that come in this afternoon and I'm allowed to be tied up all night. Do you know I'd an idea something like that would crop up? Yes, I had that feeling as well. I can't be helped, though, can you? No. 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 Dear. Well, it's no good. I shall have to be going. Yes, I have things to attend to. Well, Agnes, I hope it'll be happier circumstances next time you visit us. So do I, Hilda, so do I. I'll make a start with the washing up then, Mrs Ogden. Well, there's no rush, love. <laughs> well, it's been very nice meeting you, everyone. Uh, ta -ra. Goodbye. Bye. I'll see you out, Agnes. Well, he were a good man. He was always good to me. I shall have nothing but fond memories of him. Well, you're looking at some, aren't you? Pardon? Stan Lee. Ah, I'd have been saying the way they've been talking. Only to speak ill of the dead, though, is there? Well, I hope nobody's got cause to, have they? Well, you gave her a little right run around, I'll tell you. She'll be happy after the day's over. Well, I never thought I'd hear that said I didn't. Hear what? At least God in his mercy didn't let Archie live to hear that he was a burden to his own family. Stanley, what have you been saying? You never said that, honest. All what you did for him. Well, I didn't begrudge it. Oh, sounds like it. I don't care what it sounds like to you. I'm telling you here and now, I didn't begrudge one minute of it. No, well, you weren't the only one. He did have others he could turn to, you know. Oh, aye. Others what he didn't see when he was poorly, I know that. Others what have more regard for him now he's gone than they ever had when he was here. Hey, hang on, Well, really? I think it's time I was going. I think it is. Anyway, I've got shop to attend to. He'd like to think that that was being taken care of. Hey, Sharp. Life must go on. It's my responsibility now. You're not going nowhere near that shop. Oh, and who's going to stop me? Stanley. Well, hey? I was promised that shop. I was always promised it. It was his dying wish, and I'm not going to let him down today of all days. And what would you know about his dying wish? She'd never come near. Not at the end, she'd never come near. Now, don't go upsetting yourself, Mrs Ogden. She's only on the make, that woman, you know. Still, what's right is right. I don't care what we have to do. She's not getting that shop. Any tea in there? Yeah. Oh, what the heck's this? Bit weak. A bit weak? Was there any tea in that tea bag? Or was it just a bag? Carry it down, yeah. Where's Hilda? In bed. Bed? You don't know we got my old breakfast that she was up, do you? Oh, that explains the delicate shades of black. Is that fried bacon or a charcoal biscuit, Stanley? Oh, you're a useless wazzock, yeah. It's a woman's work because it is. Well, what isn't in this house? Oh, where you been? There and back to see how far it is. Where do you think I've been? 
and upstairs in bed for all the good it's done me. Ooh, I were tossing and turning all night. What, were you tearing the paper off the walls with your snoring and that damn woman praying on me mind? She's trying it on. Of course she is. You know, Will. No, nobody's got no will. That's the trouble. And when there's nout in writing, it's just word of mouth, isn't it? And you heard what Archie said, according to her. Anything happens to me, Avril, I want you to have the chip shop. <laughs> Avril. Well, I think you've got a fair chance, Hilda. I mean, you are his closest relatives. And closest relative always cops for the money. I mean, it's automatic. Hmm. Might be automatic to some folk, but don't forget who you're talking about. Flaming Ogdens. Now it's automatic to us, except bad luck. Oh, no, Mavis. Upstairs, love. Spot a late spring cleaning. Oh. Go on up. You weren't thinking of assaulting her, were you? <laughs> no. Ah. Oh. She'll be disappointed. Have I come at the wrong time? Oh, no, it's just that, well, you've caught me in my working clothes, that's all. I'm very fetching you, look. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, but that wasn't what I came to say. Uh, sit down, Mavis, sit down. Oh. Now, you know that property up at Saddleworth? Uh, you mean the craft shop? Uh, well, the cottage, yes. Well, I've decided to make them an offer. If it hasn't been snapped up, that is. Oh, that's very nice. It's got all I've, I've ever dreamed about. A little garden, a working area. Good, clean, fresh air, hills to stretch your legs on. Oh, it's a million miles from Weatherfield, Mavis. It is, isn't it? I can't wait. I can't just take them back, Hilda, not food. Well, I got them for our Archie's funeral tea and they was left over. It cost me a fortune, as you know. Yeah, no, but it's food, you see, Hilda. It's perishable. Well, I only got them the other day. No. No, I'm sorry, love. You'll just have to ask Alf. Oh, honest. Oh, now, I wonder if I can get a bit of help from you. Don't seem to be getting much anywhere else. Uh, what like? Well, do you know what happens when somebody dies without leaving a will? Uh, intestate, you mean? Yeah, that's what they call it when you don't leave a will. Oh. Well, uh, well, I've had no practical experience, but uh, from what I gather, it's a bit complicated. You see, all the relatives get together and they're told who gets what and who does the sharing out. Uh, look, Hilda, your best bet's a solicitor. Oh, I'm not paying no solicitor unless I'm sure of winning. And when am I ever that? Talking about a brother, is she? Yeah, you should imagine so. Yeah, poor devil. Now it goes right for some folk. She slipped down a grid one day and nobody will miss her. <laughs> I should imagine Stan will wonder where his next meal's coming from. Oh, yeah. uh, give us a couple of Eccles cakes. Oh, yes. Well, tell Gail you're buying your goodies here. I'm not traipsing all the way around there. <laughs> I'm only working across at the disco. Oh, yeah. Mechanic and aren't I? One of the contractors lawyers went in the blink. Yeah, he should have left it on the blink. Haven't you given up yet? It's a disco they're building, you know, not a flaming loony bin. What's the difference? Well, you pay to go in. I suppose that makes him dafter. <laughs> All right, who's he talking about then? Not you, love. Well, it better not be either. Ta-ra. ra, Ta -ra. Hey, listen, you've not come in with the order, have you? Because that other girl's already brought it in, what's she called? Beverly. I am coming for help, kid. I just went to have a word with Beth if she's still in. Yeah, she should be. I haven't seen her go out. Hang on. Bet! Hello! You want it? Hello. It's confidential, if you don't mind. Oh, yes. And will you serve anybody if they come in? Don't be like that. I chucked it. I just wanted a word, you know. And it's, uh, confidential. Oh, it's driving me, man, kid. I hope you haven't let the cat out of the bag, have you? Well, it's not been easy, I'll tell you. It's sat there opposite me at breakfast table. Brass face as you like. And I'm sat there with bread knife in me. I'm knowing he's been to that dating bureau. Cracking on is eligible. Eligible? Oh, shut up, you have enough on my plate. Yeah, well, just don't forget while you're at it, you went to that dating bureau and all. You spent it, make a video, did I, for everybody to see? It's a good job you didn't. If he'd have switched on and seen you, he'd have been halfway up them 62 by now, and he wouldn't have stopped to get in his car. Any road, kid, what am I gonna do? And don't mix me up or oh, it's likely to happen. Well, he knows that you want to meet him tonight. Well, not you exactly, whatever it is you call yourself. Carol Monroe. Yes, but he doesn't know where or when. No. No. So what you do is, you get in touch with that subtly woman, you know, this mm. bureau lady this morning, and tell her that you want to meet him at the Rovers at 8 o'clock tonight. He'll not come to Rovers. He'll think it's somebody from round here. No, I thought of that. Tell her that you don't want to meet him in any of your usual uh, haunts because you want to keep it quiet. 
Tell her that uh, you've picked the Rovers because you don't know nobody there. That way you'll think he's safe. <laughs> You're a crafty stone, so you aren't you? Right, you've got to be, haven't you? Yeah, but it's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Um, asking him to meet me at Rovers. No, it's got to be at Rovers. I mean, it's best in there. I'm not missing it for a gold clock. Any road, it's no more of a coincidence than you going to that dating bureau, switching on a video and seeing your own husband staring at you, telling you a pack of lies. Oh, I know. Do you know I could have murdered him? I could. We'll have him, Vera. Don't fret. I wonder what the hell's hitting. Right. Eight o'clock, the Rovers. As ever was. Yeah. Sixteen without a fifteen. Beat you by streets. You've got the luck of the devil, you have. <laughs> Hey, stop worrying, Hilda. Oh, how can I help worrying? The thought of that woman getting her hooks into our Archie's hard-earned money makes me want to... Oh, I could kill her. It didn't look though he left all that much, did it? He left a good business. Them ranges must be worth a bob or two, and his microwave oven. And there must be something in the few quid in the bank. I mean, I know he spent a lot, but he must have saved summat. Hey, if only he'd left a will. Well, there's always something to be thankful for, isn't there, Hilda? I mean, look at Stan. Just imagine what he'd be like if he had the run of a chip shop. <laughs> we should go down there. If she turns funny, kick her out. Oh, I wouldn't advocate violence, Stanley. Mind you, he's got a fair point, you know. Possession is nine points of the law. Do you mean just walk in and take over, like? Well, it's worth thinking about, isn't it? <laughs> Go the field cubs. Hey, Jack. It's that bird asking for Vince Sinclair. You've got to keep him happy, Molly. Hi, Bob. Jack, Bob. Vince Sinclair speaking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Eight o'clock. Where? Y you mean the one on Coronation Street? Was there any particular reason she she wanted to meet there? Did she say? I see. I I see. Well, I'd I'd have found it better somewhere else, but that's okay. Yep. Yeah. So, I've I've got it. Yep. Yeah. So that's eight o'clock. Rover's return, Coronation Street. Tallish, red hand. I thank you. Ciao. Bye. Hey, Wally, if anybody tries to get in touch with me tonight, you tell me I'll take a cab up to Yorkshire, Leeds, tell me. You know, yeah? I never heard it called out. I hope you ain't Burke. I'm meeting a bird, aren't I? So I've got to take the cab up to Leeds, stay, bring him back, and I might be late round about three o'clock. You're a right on up, good, aren't you? I'd watch it, though. You'll get what's coming to you one of these days. With a better look, Wally, I just might get it tonight. Tell him, look. I know I'm cutting my own throat, but these won't be doing your Nicky any good. His teeth will have fell out by the time he's 14. Uh, what is good for you nowadays? I mean, butter's bad for you, margarine's bad for you, meat gives you heart attacks, sugar rots your teeth. <laughs> then what are you supposed to do? Live on fresh air? <laughs> well, I believe in natural foods myself. You know, honey and that sort of thing. Oh, don't come it. You can make a wakes of a lamb chop if one's put in front of you. Hmm? Yes, but... Yeah. <laughs> Look, I know what you mean, but... I mean, you're, you're not the one who has to go and let him go through your pockets, and you don't have to cope with him when he finds out. Oh, I know. Kids can be slave drivers. Thanks, love. Yeah, you say that again. <laughs> Are you going to have lunch now with your guest? Oh, not likely. I'm a customer. She's doing the waiting on. Oh, well, I just hope you give her a big fat tip. <laughs> Ta-ra, <laughs> Ta Now what are you doing? Dreaming that you had a fellow that treated you like a dish rag? He doesn't treat her like a dish rag. He was only joking. But a very happy couple, Brian and Gail. Which is more than we can say for some folk. <gasps> He's not going to live in China, only Saddleworth. It might as well be China if you don't keep in touch. He will keep in touch. Well, they want me to go out there and advise him on furnishings and round curtains and that. And be a dish rag. Mavis, don't be a fool to yourself all your life. Look, if you fancy him, drop a few hints. He's getting his own house. There must be one room big enough for a double bed. I have no intention of dropping any hints. I happen to be old-fashioned in some respects, and I'm not ashamed to say so. Daft, you mean? I'll tell you something, Mavis. I hope for your sake he doesn't get that house. Because if he does, you won't see either hair of him again. Oh, well, thank you. 
Don't mention it. Come on, shape yourself. Where are we going? Like you said, we're going to our Archie's place to have it out with Madame Fanacapan. Anybody in? Yeah, we're in here. Do you mind if we have our chips in the old dining room? No, help yourselves. We're just going to our Archie's place. What about mid dinner? As soon as we get back here, we're going to Mike Baldwin's. Well, you can make your own dinner, it won't kill you. I made my own breakfast, didn't I? Good, you'll have had some practice then. Oh, Ooh, go on out. Good luck. Oh, it's Admiral what'll need the luck, not us. <laughs> Famous last words. Mrs. Collins just told me in the chemist. What do you think she said? Mr. Crabtree passed away this morning. He had to sit down there, I'd honest. My heart just fluttered. Though he has been poorly for a while, hasn't he? It was a blessing in disguise. It is sometimes. It was the same with my cousin's husband. Mind you, we were no age, were we? Not really, no. That's just six pence. It's like I've always said, when God calls, there's no denying it. Anyway, I'm glad you've kept shop up, love. It would have been a tragedy if shop had closed. Hey, I, hey, I mustn't keep these lovely people waiting. Try, see you again. I don't suppose you'll come for fish and chips. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> no, we haven't. We've come to claim us inheritance, this chip shop. Oh, yes, and by what right? I happen to be Archie's nearest relative, his only sister. And since he died interestate, which, in case you don't know, means without leaving a will, whatever he left comes to me. That's what you think, is it? Well, it seems to me you don't know the laws of the land. Queen Victoria died a bit since. Things are different now. I see. You were uh, Archie's fancy woman then, were you? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying no such thing. But I was a very good friend of his. Oh, well, I've got news for you. It's you who don't know the law of the land. Because very good friends get nout. Yes, love. Five cod, two potato pies and one steak pudding. Right, love. It's a flaming gold mine. Well, I think you're potted pair of you going to all that palaver. Shall I tell you something? If it had been my husband gone swanning off to one of them dating bureaus, it wouldn't have been any joke I'd have played on him. He wouldn't have known where I did him. You've got to humiliate them, Ivy. Grind them into the dust. It's a golden rule, is that? Whenever you get the opportunity to get one over on the fella, you've got to grab it with both hands, cos they don't give you that many. She's right, you know. How many times have I clapped with our Jack and it's had no effect? But what are you going to do exactly? What are those three up to? We've no idea, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Walker, but it must be something. They've had their heads together for long well, enough. Well, it's definitely something. Yeah. Seems a very absorbing topic of conversation, Bert. Yes, it is. Yeah. Mm. Anything I should know about? No, nothing to interest you, Mrs. Walker. Just girls talk. Get the lunch ready. Hey, hey, you can be very hurtful, you can. You what? What you said to Mrs. Walker? Just girls talk. I mean, nothing to interest her. Hey. Oh. Do you know, I never even thought of that. Really? Bye, heck, I must be improving. Yeah. I can be nasty to her now without even thinking. Hello, Jack, love. Come to buy us all large gins, have you? You what? With what she leaves me, but I'll be joking. No, I've, I've just come to tell you about that Yorkshire job, love. It's on for tonight. Now, I don't know what time I'm going to be back. It could be a little bit late. What Yorkshire job's this, Jack? Well, I'm picking a fare up and taking them to Leeds. Waiting, bringing them back. I'm going about eight o'clock, picking them up round here. Oh, well, I might as well go to bingo, then. Are you coming? Eh? Yeah. I said, are you coming? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll keep my eye on a jack, love, while you're working. Ah, you do that, love it. I'll be in for my tea. Where can I buy a pound of toadstools? Here you are, love. That's two pounds fifty-five. Ah. Are you still here? Why shouldn't we be? It's our shop. Do you know anything about fish and chips? Do you think it's just a matter of chucking them into boiling fat and waiting for something to happen? You ask Frank. There's a heck of a lot of hard work in fish and chips. Have you finished? Cos we're not daft, you know. We can learn. And we intend to. Don't we, Stanley? Come on, you open your mouth for once. Oh, we can learn. 
There's no to it. Oh, there's no to eating them. And you look as if you'd be good at that. We're not arguing with you. And we're not blackguarding neither. Good job and all, because you'd get nowhere. This place is mine by dint of hard work. Who do you think kept this place going when Archie was in bed? Me and Frank, and I'm having nobody walking in here and chucking me out, so off it. Oh, we will. But we'll be back again, first thing tomorrow morning. So don't bother opening the shop, cos we'll be doing it. Oh, aye. Right. Got a key, have you? Cos you won't get in any other way. And don't try out daft or I'll have police on you. Oh, you do, and I'll have something to say to them. You're trespassing, that's what you're doing. This is my property, and don't you forget it. I've forgotten already. Yes, love? Here I'm, Megs. Fifth chips must be beaten three times. Stanley! You haven't seen the last of us. I was never that lucky. <laughs> Tough not to crack that. Oh, I've cracked harder. Who? Maybe you mind who. You see that name over the shop? Well, I'm a crab tree. No, you're not. You're a Nogden. You changed it. Ooh, don't remind me. <laughs> hey, hang on, hang on. Oi! Oh, come oh. on. Mavis! Yes? Gentlemen to see you. How did you get on, then? She told you, did she? About the cottage. Oh, yeah. Couldn't keep it to herself. Bursting with it. Well, I've got it. Oh. I was just saying, Mavis, I've uh, pinched the deal. Another four weeks and I can move in. Oh, very nice. And there's a good chance of getting a transfer to one of the local council offices. I mean, everything's going right. Well, yes, it is, isn't it? You must come and see the place, Rita, when I've settled in. Well, maybe she's coming too, I hope. Well, I hope so. <laughs> right, well, uh, what's the plans to make? Oh, we'll go for a celebratory drink later on, if that's all right. Yes, fine. Fine. And another romance bites the dust. Oh, Rita, yeah? uh, when you come, uh, bring Leonard. I will. He'll be thrilled to bits. You don't half pick him. Dopey Derek swans off to Birkenhead. Victor takes to the hills. God knows how many have sent to Foreign Legion. Tonight? Tonight? Yeah, eight o'clock, so she said. She should be here by now. Hey, Bet, when's this thing happening? Did you say eight o'clock? As soon as the Queen and Prince Philip arrive, we're off. <laughs> You daft, you lot. Don't look at me, it weren't my idea. Mind you, I'm warming to and it, though. And here she comes. Oh, Good oh, evening, Carol. Hey, a lot coming, you know. Of course he will. Get yourself round there. Oh, oh. Yeah. Very nice. Bet, dear, do you think this is all right? Well, it's just a bit of fun, Mrs Walker, and heaven knows we don't get that many in our drab little lives. No, I suppose not. Although I don't think I'd find it terribly uplifting. Anyhow, I cannot be doing with these common scenes. I'll go and have a little rest. Yes, Mrs Walker. Hey, I found out what's going on. Yeah, I have, you know, and if I were you, I'd get a ringside seat. <laughs> you know that dating bureau that's on the other side of Weatherfield? Yeah. Here, get that down, you. He'll not come, you know. You are giving him credit for having brains, aren't you? Oh, I never thought about that. Well, you should, cos that's fellas all over. Cunning, crafty, but now it's up there. <laughs> yeah. She holds all the trumps, you know. You won't get a look in. She's holding all the money and all. Did you see what they were taking over that counter? Yeah, but they got over that deal, eh? I mean, you don't get fish and spuds for nothing, you know. Oh, I didn't know they make big profits, Eddie. I had an auntie run a chip shop and she went cruising every winter. And I'm in Caribbean, not the Isle of Man. Well, I'm not denying there's money to be made. You want to go to a solicitor? Cast your bread on the waters. Mm. And all I get back's wet crumbs. Cost money, solicitors. What doesn't? Well, go to legal aid. It doesn't cost you nothing. No, you don't want to go there. You want to go to the Citizens Advice Bureau. They've got one at the town hall. I had an auntie who was never off the doorstep. I mean, look at it this way. You know nothing about wills and the law and things like that, do you? No. Well, there you go. They'll tell you. And if they don't, she'll dig up an auntie that will. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can murder a pint. Oh, stay where you are, Stan. I'll go down the corner shop. It'll be dead in the rovers anyway. Oh. I reckon it's going to be the biggest flop of all time. Get away. How are you doing, Ginge? He'll not come, you know. Mm. And it's not to do with being clever. Tim. It just got animal instincts, he has. How much did you say? Two pounds twenty. Go on, she's worth it. Who is? I don't know, whoever it is you're taking him to. Oh, no. I'm working, I'm taking a fare up to Leeds. Oh, do all your passengers get boxes of chocolates? All part of the service, my love. Oh, look 
o'clock at the time, because it's nearly ten past ten. Oh, shut up, Winjin. You know your Jack, you'd be late for his own funeral. Get your Dutch courage down you. Oh, there is nothing to I thought she'd gone to bingo. Oh. There is somebody, though, waiting for you in the snow. It'll be that fair I'm taking up to leave. Oh, well, watch yourself, Jack, because I've seen her. And I thought, that's Jack done with a thought. <laughs> Aren't you having a drink, Jack? No, 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 uh, I won't have time. I'll be going straight out. Yes, you will, won't you? <laughs> Hi, Carol. Well, hello, Vince. Terrific to meet you. Oh. <laughs> and you're no flipping widow either. No, but I will ten minutes after I get you home. <laughs> Last time he goes on telly, every <laughs> Are you glad I brought the wine round? Oh, yes. I'm not terribly keen on some public houses late at night. No, the. It can get a bit rough. And there might not be many more opportunities like this. Well, after you move to Saddlewood. <sighs> you know, cosy evenings alone with a bottle of Montefiore. No. You're a, a very worldly person, really. <laughs> yes, I suppose I am. Only we've, uh, we've got a lot in common, haven't we? A love of literature feeling for nature? Yes, I suppose we have. I mean, it'd be a pity. Well, it's, it's quite a big cottage. Big enough for two. Why don't you come and share it with me? Do you mean get married? Who knows? I mean, if the trial works out. Trial? Why not? Anyway, here's to us. To us. Coming down here, your breakfast out, and some of us have got where to go, sir. Yeah, no, 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 I've had an old flaming night. Yeah, and you have it all flaming day and all. You're my husband, aren't you? If I can't have a go at you, who can I have a go at? Not what you made me for. Well, I got no else, did I? You ran into that one, Stanley. It's all my fault, everything. Well, so it is. If I hadn't have married you, I might have been Mrs. Walter Mossop by now, and I wouldn't have been sitting here flipping helpless. He cosseted me, did Walter. I cosseted you. You what? He doesn't know the meaning of the word. Oh, yes, I do. That's legal. I'm not empowered. His bird said so. Me fiancé, Stanley. She said, go to the Citizens Advice Bureau and they'll tell you how to get rid of that Carter woman. Why is it I have to fight for every flipping penny? I mean, why does it just fall into some folk's yeah. laps and I have to worry myself sick trying to scrape enough to live on? Well, you see, it depends on what God pulls out the hat for you. What's written on your bit of paper, you know? Rich man, poor man, beggar man. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Oh, I know what you mean, all right. Too true, I know. Oh, have your breakfast, Hilda. You'll feel better. Do you know, if I come back, I'm coming back as a flipping poodle. Let somebody fuss over me for a change. Sure. Sure up, you. Take it up. 
Don't you go funny on me, cos Victor's emigrating. Oh, it's only going to Saddleworth. That's emigrating. All right, that's emigrating. Now, do you mind if I get on with my work? Yes, I do. It's bad enough having to work for me living without having to share my labours with a flipping icicle. Oh, thank you. There you go, Arctic Annie. Did you have a row? No, we did not have a row. Did he keep his hands to himself? Oh. The rotten devil. I'll get it. Hello, Weatherfield. Oh, come here, you. I've got a bone to pick with you. Next time, put your dirty overalls in the wash. Don't hide them. You are? I don't believe it. He says he's coming home for his dinner. Yes, I heard you. Come home. You'll get out. <laughs> you could sure up and all. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Tell you what, see you in Rovers about half past twelve. We'll get some at there. No, I won't keep you waiting. What would you do in a pub if I didn't turn up? Fellas, don't get married. They drive you around the flipping twist. Don't have to worry. I'm not likely to. You did have a row, didn't you? I don't want to talk about it, Rita. Now, in my experience, you usually say that just before it all starts pouring out. Well, do you really want to know? I mean, you're not just looking for an excuse to be clever at my expense. Is that how I treat you? Yes. Oh. Well, not in this case. I really want to know. I really want to know. Oh, Victor wants me to go and live at Saddleworth with him. Get away. Not on a sort of trial basis. Oh. Bang on time. Oh, believe me, it's against my nature. I have to force myself to be punctual or I'd never get through the day. I can't believe that. It's true. The first trauma of the day is getting out of bed. <laughs> anyway, I'm here. Right, what would you like to drink? Half a lager would be fine. Good. Sit yourself down, I won't be taken. Uh, half a lager and another half a bitter, please, Fred. Hey, uh, you're on a sweet thing there, mate, aren't you? Now, Fred, don't judge everybody by yourself. There is such a thing as having business with a lady. Yeah, and I know the kind of business. Shall I bring the drinks over? Thought you might. <laughs> the drinks are coming over. Uh, sorry for a make for lunch. We've got new plumbers over at the centre and I've got to get back to them. Do you need to employ Mr Faircloth then? Uh, no. Not that I could get him. He's rather busy on a venture that we both know something about. Have you come to terms with the idea of a disco? Well, let's just say I'm holding a watching brief. Anyway. <laughs> yes, that was what I came to talk about. So. <laughs> I've a job to offer you, if you're interested, that is. Try me. Before I do, is there any chance of a bite to eat? Here? Well, other people seem to be eating. Oh, oh would a pie suit you, bowl of soup? Pie'd be lovely. Meat and potato? Great. Two meat and potato pies, please, Mr. Walker. Thank you. Is it right what I hear? You're coming in some money. Oh, hello. Begging letters have started, have they? You'll get no begging letters off me, so it's them ovens you'll have to watch. They'll be after you. Here, Fred, uh, you don't happen to know where the Citizens Advice Bureau is, do you? Yeah, it's uh, Lower Edward Street. Is it about what your kid left you like? I just thought I might pay them a visit, that's all. Oh. Lower Edward Street, is that? Yeah, right at the top end. Oh, thank you. Bye, if you're on a doubt, yeah. I think she's after me. Ooh, I don't blame her. <laughs> Now, if there's anything else you want, don't hesitate to ask. Oh, beg your pardon? Now, I'm just thinking how nice trail up here. Wait, please, Mrs. Duckworth. Oh, I'll never get a service like this when I'm on my own. She can tell I'm used to the Dorchester. And are you? Used to the Dorchester? Where else is there? Incidentally, does your wife know you're having lunch with a strange woman? She does. She knows where I am and who I'm with. Oh, it's not all the romance out of it. It's the soft lights and the sweet music. Go straight to a woman's head. Would you like the slightly burnt one? Go on, then. Go on what? Oh, stop playing Little Miss Innocent. Is that what you've been thinking about? Whether to go and live tally with Victor? Yes. Well, I'm not quite as old-fashioned, you know, as you like to make out. Yes, I know, but... Mavis Riley living in sin. Don't sound right. What, well, you did it. Why well, should I? die? I was Rita Littlewood, love. Weatherfield's answer to Joan Collins. You're... Well, you're a bit different, aren't you? I fail to see why I should be. You're not quite as green as your cabbage looking, are you? 
been trying to get that across to you for several years. And you're really thinking about it? Seriously? Come on, look me in the eye when I'm talking to you. Yes, I am really thinking about it seriously. Now, do you mind if I get on with my work? Right, well, we're all ready to go. All we're shells off now is the grub. Maybe it's to bring the fish and chips. You hope. Obviously, those, I'm starving. Oh, well, you will be, Stanley. It's at least ten minutes since you had a bacon butty. Oh, funny. Can't smell nothing. No. What are you having? Fresh out and two veg. Where's the fish and chips? Don't you talk to me about fish and chips. I've been run off my feet traipsing off to that Citizens Advice Bureau. Did you get anywhere? Oh, I've got to go back this afternoon to see a solicitor they've got. Only he's not in this morning. What about us, dinner? Go and make your own. And while you're at it, brew us a pot of tea. Hey. Look, we could be coming into a fish and chip shop, Stanley. And I might just find a use for you, like melting you down for lard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, is that right, Vera? The fuzz are digging your backyard up. You are? Hey, well, I've heard you've uh, done your jacking and uh, buried him under the flagstones, you know. Well, how would you know you weren't even here? Don't have to be here. It's on everybody's lips, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, is it gospel? Bring, uh, you were in the snug there with a red wig on. Your jack comes in on a blind date and finds it was you. <laughs> oh, now, look, shut up about it, eh? I can't understand them going to their flipping dated agencies. Still, he is married, isn't he? Yeah, and so are you. Oh. Oh, that was very nice. I'm partial to a piece of homemade apple pie. Between ourselves, she gets a homemade apple pie from a little shop round the corner. Mm. Who doesn't? Another drink? Not just yet. I really must get to the point. You said you were busy. I have this proposition to put to you. In the nicest possible way, of course. Oh. Sorry. Depends what you think of the nicest propositions. This is a business proposition. Oh. Can't win them all. We get a fairly varied reader's mail at the recorder, but so far I haven't done much with it. I'll print the odd letter, but I haven't got round to answering queries, that sort of thing. Marjorie Proop stuff? Not exactly. The odd one's a bit intimate, but mostly they're everyday problems. Uh, I'm having a row with my neighbours, how do I resolve it? Uh, council wants to pull my house down, how do I stop them? Fairly run-of-the-mill stuff. So you're thinking of starting an advice column? In a word, yes. Would you like to handle it? Could be interesting. Hello. There'll be some money in it. Not a lot, but something. What do you think? Well, could I see a sample of the letters before I make my mind up? Why not? The Gazette do an advice column, but between ourselves it's pretty ropey. Some of the answers they give are laughable, which is why I'd like ours to be looked after by somebody who knows what he's talking about. You're very flattering. I don't think so. He obviously has hidden depths, oh, Mr. Pendlebury. Well, you know, Victor, he probably read about trial marriages in a library book. Thinks it's good enough for Jet Set, good enough for him. You won't say I told you, My dear, I wouldn't dream of it. Is it likely to happen? Well, she's thinking about it, or so she's saying. On the horns of a dilemma, as they say. Ah, stuck right through her. Knowing maybe she'll be going through agony. I think she ought to give it a go. It's near as she'll get to the real thing. You think marriage is the real thing, then? Can be. Can't it? Certainly can. Hey, this toast. Black as the ears of spades. Look, if you don't want it, give it here. No, no, you're all right, you're all right. I know, I'm all right. If it hadn't been for me, you'd have still been sitting there waiting to be fed. Do you know, you should have been a baby bird, Stan. In them nests, you know, with your mouth open, waiting for Hilda to come with the hard-won worms. Just saying, Hilda, you should have been a baby bird waiting to be fed. Baby what? Baby elephant, more like. <laughs> I've decided I'm taking four stone off you if I have to starve you to death. I'm big boned. I don't care how big your bones are, they're too well covered. Right, well, I'm off. Hey, who's this solicitor you're going to see? Oh, he's a, a communal solicitor. I thought you mean a community solicitor. Oh, yeah, yeah, could be that. Only he gives free advice to the uh, lower income groups. And seeing I didn't marry Walter Mossop, that's what I'm in. Well, the best of luck any road. Thank you. What have you got out to say? Have you got any of them little apple pies? Yes, Stanley, I've got four. And I'll have four when I get back, else there'll be trouble. See you later. 
Stay in the bed, Bin. Stanley, you heard what she said. You could take one. Be all right if you take one. Look, you know, one of these days, your skin is going to come to the end of its tether and you'll explode. And I hate to think what this place will look like after the Holocaust. I thought you were a mate of mine. Oh, stop looking under fed. It doesn't become you. walk in a newsagent shop, read old magazines and walk out without buying anything? I would not. If I go into a shop and I haven't got what I want, I feel obliged to buy something else. Well, that's daft to the way, well, isn't that's it? that's the way I am. Which brings us back to the subject. What are you going to do? Is it going to be a Woolies wedding ring and a life of bliss in Saddleworth? Or keep your honour intact for what it's worth? It's worth quite a lot to me. So you're going to turn him down? I didn't say that. You haven't said out no, yet. No, I don't intend to either, not to you. Who to, then? Quite. Hello. Hello. Have I uh, come at a bad time? They're all bad times here, love. Oh, I'm sure they're not. I was uh, on my way back from the Social Security office. Not on supplementary benefit, are you? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, an official query for the rates office. And I thought I'd uh, pop in and I see if... I was if wondering I... where you got to. Well, I've deliberately kept out of your way so you could... Uh, sorry to be so cryptic. It's a, a little matter between Mavis and myself. Oh, that's all right, love. Keep me ignorant. I'm happier that way. Well, um... Uh, I haven't... Um... Oh, uh... Well, um... Oh, well, I'll take a, a box of chopped up Brazils while I'm here. They're very expensive. Well, it's my only vice. Hear that, Mavis? Uh, well, I might uh, pop round this evening, then, if, if that's all right. Oh, she's always glad to see you, aren't you, Mavis? <sighs> Yes, fine. Right then. Well, I'll uh, I'll go and indulge myself. Bye. 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 Bit of luck, you'll say, everyone. In future, would you please let me answer my own personal questions? I mean, as a matter of fact, I, I didn't want Victor around tonight. Sorry. You're not sorry at all. I know. Ditto. Oh. Very quiet, Mrs. Walker. Yes. Don't think we're going to make our fortunes today. <laughs> I'll cancel my Rolls Royce then, eh? <laughs> I think I should. <laughs> we don't often see you drinking spirits, Mrs. Ogden. Oh, uh, no, well, it's uh, more in the nature of Dutch courage, actually, Mrs. Walker. I'm just off to see the solicitor about my late brother's estate. Yeah, right. Is it considerable? Well, I've uh, got my expectations, really. I wish you well, then, dear. Oh. Lots to do at a time like this. Oh, by heck there is. Do you know, I've not been off my feet since he passed away. It's funny, isn't it? They're laid to rest, and you're running around like a scalded cat. <laughs> yes. Any road. Oh, um, you wouldn't happen to have something that'll take my breath away, have you? I beg your pardon? You know, one of them squirters. <laughs> oh, I think I might have. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. Say again. Uh, a 50 pence piece, three tens, three fives, two twos and a one. I've got to give the bus driver 26 pence, you see. That's the fur. Well, it's got to have change, mate. It isn't everybody that's got the right fare, is it? Well, yes, I know, but I don't normally travel by bus. The car's being serviced, but some drivers can be a bit obstreperous. Well, be obstreperous back, mate. I mean, the public servants are them fellas. I mean, they've got a public service to do, haven't they? I mean, they're like me behind this bar. I mean, you've got to be helpful, haven't you? Now, what do you want? Four tens? No, three tens. Look, look, three look, look write it down there. You get me all mixed up. Yeah. I'm not a change machine. Now, I think this is what you want. Hold it well away from your mouth. Oh, I will. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Oh, on your own today? Uh, yes, I've just been to see Mavis and suddenly realised I hadn't got change for the bus. No wonder we're not making fortunes, Mrs Walker. Nobody's spending out. I understand you're on the moon. Uh, yes, I am. Saddle with. Oh, lovely. Pennine country. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mrs Walker. Only, I wouldn't like him to think I only wanted the money for drink. They're very cosy, these houses, though, aren't they? Oh, well, small, anyway. Well, I'll leave you to it. I've just picked three or four. We're going to have room for them. Yeah, we'll do. Deadline? Wednesday afternoon? No problem. Good. Bye. 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 Oh, here's one right up your dad's street. 
I love making my own marmalade, but it always turns out runny. Mm. What am I doing wrong? Wait, your dad can answer that, can't he? He knows all about making marmalade. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Yes, I know, but I can't answer the letters, can I? That's your daddy's job. Oh, no, it isn't. You can help. You're always grumbling about me not letting you join oh, in. Well, fair enough. Oh, here you are, kid. Here's one right up our street. I watched a rugby league match on TV last week, and after one side had scored a try, the kicker was given two shots at goal, converted them both, and the score went up by four points. How does this come about? Oh, well, that's easy. We know that, don't we? I don't. No, your dad doesn't either. <laughs> I can't say I'm really surprised that he'd make that sort of proposition. No. Well, he's very bohemian. The trouble is, I'm not. It's all very strange. Can you imagine sitting here 20 years ago, calmly discussing whether or not you should live with a man? Well, less than that, really. It's all gone too fast for me. But what do I do? Well, do you love him? Oh, yes, I think so. Oh, that sounds awful, doesn't it? I... Well, I don't really know. Well, if you never saw him again, could you still go on living happily? Well, I'd miss him. I'd definitely miss him. You see, Mavis, this sounds rather tactless, but... Well, it is an opportunity. And I don't get many. No, I keep telling myself that. I mean, I may not get another chance. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I'm not but... getting any younger. I keep telling myself that as well. And you're right, it is an opportunity. And it is the first time that any man has actually asked me to go and live with him. I just wish... I know. Oh, I feel like going out, having a meal and going to the pictures. I thought Victor was coming. Well, he is. That's why I want to go out. I mean, I've got nothing to say to him yet, Emily. Well, surely I can take a couple of days to decide what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. Come on. There's a new Chinese opened in the precinct and Gandhi's at the Luxy. We'll make it Oriental night. I'm not being silly, am I? No, you're not. You take as much time as you want. But for now, get your coat on. She's taking her time, isn't she? She's dealing with professional people, Stanley. They always keep you hanging about. Hey, she's here. Try and look like you've been working. Well, I've been working. Well, try and look like it, then. Oh. Well, thanks for the cup of tea. Just what I needed. What cup of tea? You might well ask. I'll put the kettle on. <clears throat> Have you been sat there ever since I went out? I've been working. We've only been in ten minutes. How did your day go? Did you sort it out, did you? Oh, they've had me running round like somebody not right. First, there was this solicitor fella. Was it old geezer? Oh, no, no, far from it. There's a young lad in a scruffy pullover. Sure it wasn't the plumber having you on? <laughs> oh, no. No, he knew what he was talking about, all right. That's when I finally got in to see him. There was a weighty room full of folk when I got there, worse than the doctors on a Monday morning. And he kept it till this time? Oh, no, that wasn't the end of my travels. No, he sent me to the probate registry in Manchester to get me forms. Two buses and a ten-minute walk. Well, what do you do with them? Well, I fill them in, don't I? What do you think I do? Light the fire with them? I'll give you a hand. Oh, no, you won't. They have to be able to read them. I'm good with forms. I used to fill plenty in when I was on the lorries. Yeah, you fiddled them and all fiddle these, you go to prison. So what do you do with the forms when you filled them in? Well, I have to take them back to the probate, and then a fortnight later, they call me in to swear an oath. Oh, well, he'll be able to help you there. He knows some good ones, yeah. don't you, Stan? <laughs> And a fortnight after that, I get me letters of administration. And that's when I get me inheritance. And then he says, the chip shop's ours. No, Stanley. He says it's mine. The chippy, what's left of the lease, all the equipment, proceeds of the furniture and bits and pieces, mine. Now then, I'm going upstairs to soak myself in the bath. And when I come down, I want a nice piece of added chips and mushy peas waiting for me on a plate on that table. And a pot of strong tea and a couple of rounds of bread and butter cut thin. 
After I've dusted off this Avril Carter, I'm going to be a woman of property, Stanley. So you better start acting accordingly. Streets on Sunday at 3 with the Omnibus and then back on Monday at 9. And after the break, we're off to Emmerdale.